Hello, word nerds. Hello, 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 hello. Thank you for joining me on this journey of words and things. Uh, you know, it's time to say all the, th- all the stuff. There is a Google voice number in the show notes. You should be able to call it and leave me a voicemail if you want to say anything. A correction, a comment, praise me, <laughs> validate what I'm doing is entertaining in some form and funny. Um, no, uh, let's see, what else? Instagram and Twitter, at DictionaryPod, you can follow me. I post a little bit. Uh, you can email me, DictionaryPod at gmail.com. Uh, what are the other things? Uh, I, I, it would be so fun if you sh- if you recorded a short little musical ditty uh, that y- I could play at the beginning of a, of a show. You can record a sound effect, preferably just with your face uh, or, or uh, you know, body, hands in some way. Uh, something, you know, just unique and fun. And maybe I'll put that in an episode. And, um, oh God, I'm sure there's other things. Patreon, you can join the Patreon uh, if you want uh, episodes very early. And that's always fun. Uh, I'm recording this on March 13th, 2022. Okay, the first word in this uh, last section of page 295 is crib. Second form, verb, from 1605. One, we're starting with transitive. One, synonyms are confine and cramp. Is it confine or confine? I think it's confine and cramp. I'm so cribbed. I'm feeling so cramped and cribbed, maybe. Number two, to provide with or put into a crib, especially to line or support with a framework of timber. Uh, Number three, synonyms are pilfer and steal but especially the synonym plagiarize. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit in the last one, in the last episode. Intransitive, 1A, synonyms are steal and plagiarize. 2B, to use a crib, and the synonym is cheat. 2, to have the vice of cribbing, which... I would assume that that would be the have the vice of stealing. If that's a thing that you like to do a lot, then you are you are cribbing. You have the vice of cribbing. You are, you are crib. Oh, maybe you are a cribber. That is a noun. Um. Oh, what was? Oh, pop. That's going to be my sound effect. Pop. Next word: cribbage. C r i b b a g e. Noun from 1630. It is a card game for two players in which each player tries to form various counting combinations of cards. I may have mentioned this once before. I think I've played this game a couple of times. I was given a cribbage board for probably Christmas, played it a couple times, and I think that was it. Not that I wasn't interested in it. It's just I never got around to it. And I don't remember how to play. Maybe we should post the uh, the instructions in the show notes. Two is it only two players? That's interesting. Uh, you have to form various counting combinations. And I remember there, yeah, there's a board, and you have a little piece. And you, if you maybe if you get points, you go, you put your piece down the board, and then the goal is to get to the end. You probably don't need the board. You could probably just keep track of the points on a piece of paper if you wanted to. But yes, there is a cribbage board, if I'm thinking of the right game. Um, Yeah, I, I don't know why it's called cribbage, other than the fact that the, uh, the pile of cards, let's see, the cards discarded, uh, the dealer uses them in scoring, that is called the crib. So it's, uh, that's, maybe that's, it just, it came from that. Why did they call it a crib? Is it because that's where the, a baby goes? Tell me. Pop. Next is cribbing. Noun from 1841. One. Material for use in making a crib. What would that be? Would that be wood to build the frame of the crib? 
that's probably the biggest one. Number two, a vice of horses. Huh? A vice of horses in which they grasp a solid object with their teeth and gulp air. Whoa. Okay, and the example of the thing that they might be grasping is a stall door. So when I said uh, cribbing, to have the vice of cribbing, that was for the second form of crib, I thought maybe it was, we were talking about stealing, but no, we were talking about this. A vice of horses in which they grasp a solid object with their teeth and gulp air. I am so confused by this. Why do they do this? What is the point? And is it a vice? Is it because it's a thing that they like to do that they shouldn't do? Like humans have vices, smoking, drinking, stuff like that. So what is what is this? Ah, interesting. Um, hmm. Any of you uh, people who have horses, please tell me more. I'd like to know. Cribbing. Okay. Um, pop, 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 pop. Crib biting is the next word. Two words, actually. Noun from 1831. And uh, the synonym is just the number two definition for the word cribbing, which is the thing with the horses. Crib biting. Oh, so maybe it's because they're biting their crib. You know, the place that they live and sleep. They're biting it. But but I still don't understand why they do it. Pop? Next word. This is, uh, this is a sad one. Just going to say it. It's sad. It is called crib death. Two words. Noun from 1965. And uh, I think crib death might be the old name because the synonym is just sudden infant death syndrome uh, which is also called SIDS s-i-d-s because that's the acronym um yeah i don't know this is a thing that just happens sometimes um i'm sure that there must be medical reasons why but uh, they just call it sudden infant death syndrome Uh, maybe that's a thing we should put in the show notes too we as in me myself because i'm the only one doing this uh but yeah it, it the name crib death is very literal it is death of a baby in a crib and that sucks that's sad it happens way more than it should probably less so these days now that people know about it and maybe know certain things to help to prevent it uh but uh, yeah still happens okay pop Next is crib reform. Crib reform. Uh, Yeah, it's spelled like that. Crib reform. Adjective from 1741. Pierced with small holes. Pierced with small holes. So would Swiss cheese be crib reform? Would my grater, my cheese grater, or, you know, you can grate other things, would that be crib reform? Uh, This is from Latin, ah, uh, cribrum, which means sieve, S-I-E-V-E, the thing that has lots and lots of little holes in it. Cribrum, that's how I think you say it. Um, It is also akin to the Latin word cernere, I think that's how you would say it, which means to sift. Yeah, if you're sifting flour, uh, it's coming out of a, a metal thing that has lots of little holes in it. Uh, And then there's more at the word certain. I am certain that all those things have small holes. Crib reform. It's a fun word. Pop. Next word, crib sheet. Two words, noun from 1960. This synonym is just cheat sheet. Cheat sheet, it's a little harder to say, but it's, uh, I like that it's, uh, it rhymes. Cheat sheet. Pop, pop. Next is chrysated. Chrysated. Or you could say uh, chrysated. Yeah. C R I C E T I D. Chrysated. Noun from 1960. Any of a family of small rodents, including the hamsters, voles, lemmings, gerbils, and New World rats and mice that are often grouped with the murids, 
M-U-R-I-D-S. I don't even know what those are. Uh, Chrysetid is also an adjective. I have never heard this. Uh, let's see. The family name is Chrysetidae. The genus name is Chrysetus. Uh, it is of Slavic origin. It is akin to the Czech word, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It would be probably Kresek or Krechik with K's, and that means hamster. Hmm. So, uh, what, what, Christ, Christ, yeah, Christ did. So we had Corvid, those are like the, the crows and the ravens. Cor- Corvine, I think, is like the adjective or whatever. So would Chrysetin, Chrysat, what would the what would the word be for that? I'm not sure. This is a new word to me. I like it. The Chrysetids. Hamsters, voles, lemmings, gerbils, rodents, rats, mice. Pop. Next is crick. First form, noun from the 15th century. A painful, spasmodic condition of muscles as of the neck or back. So it's when your muscles spaz and it hurts oh so much. You got a crick. You got a crick in your neck. I wake up once or twice a week with a crick in my neck because I need a new pillow situation. Uh, Yeah, it's just from Middle English. Crick with a Y. C-R-Y-K. Pop. Second form of crick. This is a transitive verb from 1884. One, to cause a crick in, like in the neck. I'm uh, I'm cricking. I'm I'm cricking over here. Nah. Number two, to turn or twist, especially into a strained position, and you might be turning or twisting the head. You gotta crick your head around to see you when you're checking your blind spot when you're driving. Next, oh, you know what? It's funny. Pop isn't even the sound effect that I wanted to do. Maybe I'll do it for tomorrow. Uh, Okay, next word. Pop. This is the sound effect I wanted to do. It is the first form of the word cricket. Noun from the 14th century. One, any of a family of leaping arthropterin insects Noted for the chirping notes produced by the male by rubbing together specially modified parts of the forewings. Orthopterin. So the word wing is in there. The pterin uh, suffix. Ortho. Does it mean wings on the back, possibly? I don't know. Uh, Yes, the male make the chirping sounds. They have specially modified forewings to, to make the number two a low wooden footstool is a cricket three a small metal toy for signaling device or signaling device a small metal toy or signaling device that makes a sharp click or snap when pressed i don't think i know what that is small metal toy a cricket Hmm. it's an old school toy i guess um, etymology, not so much. Sorry about that. Oh, I forgot to say that, uh, for the chirping insect, the family name is Gorillidae. G-R-Y-L-L-I-D-A-E. Pop? Second form of cricket, noun from 1598. One, a game played with a ball and bat by two sides of usually 11 players, each on a large field, centering upon two wickets, each defended by a batsman. I have seen a little bit of this game, Cricket, which is played all over the world, not so much in America, but many, many other countries play this game. It's similar to baseball, which, of course, here in America we play, uh, but similar but different. Uh, very different, I think, in, in certain ways. And uh, I don't I don't know the rules, and it's a little confusing. I should probably learn it someday. Not that I'm going to play, but it would be good to learn more about what is happening with this game, Cricket. Uh, number two, fair and honorable behavior, 
as in, it wasn't cricket for her to break her contract. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, and that is a quote from Jerry Nadel. So this is from the Middle French word cricket, C-R-I-Q-U-E-T, which is a goal stake in a bowling game. So there's a bowling game and it has stakes and it's the goal. That's cricket. Now that's very similar to croquet. So are the game cricket and croquet, they must be they must be related because yeah, I could see it. I could see that. Fascinating. Uh yeah, and the 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 example, the definition played with a ball, two sides, a ball and bat, blah blah blah. It's very a very similar definition to what baseball probably is, except baseball doesn't have wickets and things. Wickets and crickets. Pop, pop. Third form of cricket, intransitive verb from circa 1809. To play the game of cricket. Cricketer is a noun. The cricketer is cricketing cricket. Pop. Next, cricoid. C-R-I-C-O-I-D, cricoid, adjective from 1746 of relating to or being a cartilage of the larynx with which arytenoid cartilages articulate. I don't know why that was so complicated. Uh, It's cartilage in the larynx. That's your voice box. I'm using that right now, I guess. Um, And the Arytenoid cartilages articulate. <laughs> That's fun. Fun phrase to say. Uh, let's see. From Greek, krikoides, which means ring-shaped. From krikos or krikos, which means ring. And there's more at the word circle. Hmm. So yeah, this uh, this cartilage must be in a ring shape. And that's that's how that happened. Krikoid. Pibbity pop poop pop. Next is cri de care. Cri de care. Three words C R I. Next word D E. Next word C O E U R. Cri de cure. You gotta you gotta you gotta do that funny mouth shape. Cure. Noun from nineteen oh four. A passionate outcry as of appeal or protest. And this is French, literally means cry from the heart. You're you're so passionate, you're crying from the heart, appealing or protesting something. When do we use this phrase? Is it in legal situations? I don't know. Cri de coeur. Pop. Pity pop poop pop. Next is crier. Noun from the 14th century. One that cries, as in A, an officer who proclaims the orders of a court. And then B, the synonym is town crier. I'm sure somebody's made this joke before, but now I want to see just a town crier. Just the person who's just sitting on the street, just with their head in their hands crying. Oh, look, there's the town crier. Pop! Next is... Crikey, C-R-I-K-E-Y. You could also put a C in the middle. Crikey. Uh, You could also say, well, that second uh, spelling would be pronounced cricky. Crikey and cricky. This is an interjection from 1838, and it is used as a mild oath. A mild oath. Um, I mean, I have heard people say, crikey. Is that what a mild oath is? I don't even know what that means. This is a euphemism for the word Christ. Crikey or cricky and Christ. So that's an interesting one there. All right, we got one more for this episode. Pop, 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 pop. It is crim, C-R-I-M, abbreviation for criminal. So, we had crib, cribbage, cribbing, crib biting, crib death, crib reform, crib sheet, 
chrysetid, crick, crick, cricket, 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 cricoid, cri de cur, crier, crikey, and crim. Crikey, I'm having a hard time figuring out what to pick. That was a bad, and I apologize to everybody for that. Um... Let's see. What what am I liking? I like crib reform. I like chrysetid. Those were good new words for me. Um, also, cricoid. Ooh, boy. Uh, the cribbing was interesting with the horse thing. Let's see. Well, maybe I'll pick cricoid because I'm using my cricoids. Is that what it is? It's, uh, it's of relating to the cartilage of the larynx. So it's a, it's not a noun, it's an adjective. My vo- how would I don't even know how to use that in a sentence. Nobody gave me no examples. Uh cricoid, cricoid. My larynx is cricoid because there's cartilage in which a retinoid cartilage is articulate. Cricoid. All right, that is a fine place to end this episode hey guess what we got more coming so much more so much more we're only on page 296 that'll be tomorrow out of a lot more and uh yeah good times are coming thank you very much for listening to this podcast this episode all of these things and until next time this is spencer dispensing information goodbye for now Hello, Word Nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. It is the podcast where I am reading this book and I say the things that I think about this book. Uh, Okay, so this is the top of page 296, and this episode will be called The Crime Episode because it is largely consisting of Crime, criminal words, all that stuff. It's the crime, the crime section, the crime episode. Um, and I think my sound effect, I don't know, it's not the most perfect thing. I was trying to think of what what sort of sound effect would you use for crime? Uh, I don't know. The easiest thing I could think of was just, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, like, don't commit that crime. But, of course, crime is... Can, it can can be, how many times will I say can? It can be a bit of a gray area. You know, are you going to go steal a loaf of bread so your family can eat? Uh, yeah. Yeah, probably am. Uh, is it technically a crime? Yeah. Do people make up the laws? Yeah, they do. Are they um, maybe not always the most perfect things? Yeah, it's true. Okay, so anyway, that's my little tangent on that. So, the first word in this episode is, it's another abbreviation, crime con, two words, and it stands for criminal convent, no, I thought it was criminal convention. That would be a weird convention to go to. Uh, Did you go to crime con 2022? Oh yeah, all the booths were just criminals and, uh, and prisons and things that you can do. anyway um it is criminal conversation criminal so is it two two criminals talking or is it something else crim crim con i think i said crime con before crim con ah uh, uh, uh. next is crime c r i m e noun from the 14th century one an act or the commission of an act that is forbidden, or the omission of a duty that is commanded by a public law and that makes the offender liable to punishment by that law. Uh, Okay, act or the commission of an act, I think is commission of the act, is that like you admitted to it or is that something else? I don't remember. So the act or the commission of the act, uh, that is, it's a forbidden act, or... The omission of the duty that is commanded, that's a very weird, weird way to say that. The omission of a duty that is commanded by a public law. And so you, so the, uh, it's, it's kind of legalese. 
uh, there's a public law and there's no something happening and it makes the offender liable to punishment. So the, the person who did the thing is, you know, they're going to be punished because of that law. And then especially a gross violation of law. Crime. Take a bite out of it. Number two, a grave offense, especially against morality. I feel like there's a sneeze coming. Number three, criminal activity, as in efforts to fight crime. How are those efforts going? We got a lot of work to do on just the whole system, the whole system. Number four, something reprehensible, foolish, or disgraceful, as in it's a crime to waste good food. I uh, I believe that I think it should be against the law. No, I uh, I yeah, I'm I'm not a big fan of food going to waste. I will either save it for leftovers or I will eat more than I should just so it doesn't get wasted or give it away to somebody else. Uh, sometimes if I'm on a work trip and I have leftovers and I, you know, I'm about to go on a plane tomorrow or something, I will find somebody like a homeless person who needs some food cuz you know, they need food. Um, also, I don't know how many restaurants do this, but more restaurants and food places should be giving away their extra food to homeless shelters and stuff like that. I know some of them do, but, uh, I definitely think we could use more of that. Or, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, uh, give it away to people who, uh, don't have the funds to get food, you know, give away day old food if it's still you know, not, hasn't gone bad. A synonym for the word crime is offense. Crimeless is an adjective. This is from Latin crimen, which means accusation or reproach or just crime. Probably akin to the Latin cernere, which means to sift or determine. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, crime is from crimin. Ah, ah, ah. Next is crime against humanity. Three words. Uh, It's from 1945. Atrocity, I will skip the parentheses, atrocity that is directed especially against an entire population or part of a population on specious or specious grounds and without regard to individual guilt or responsibility, even on such grounds. And the example of this atrocity would be an extermination or enslavement. On an entire, so we'll read it again with that. An atrocity like extermination or enslavement, so extermination is getting rid of, killing, or enslavement is making, turning them into slaves. So an atrocity like those things that is directed especially against a whole population of people or part of a population um, on, okay, specious grounds or specious grounds. uh, Would that be, well, it's not species. Not sure what that is is exactly. Um, And with then without regard to individual guilt or responsibility. So you're saying, I'm not guilty. I don't have responsibility for this thing that I did, but it's a big thing and you do. Crime against humanity. Humans, the the word human is in humanity. So, you know, it's a crime against people, big groups of people. And yes, this is from 1945. So this was at the end of World War II when the Holocaust happened and there was massive crime against humanity stuff. (laughs) Okay. Ah, ah, ah. Crime against nature is next. Three words. From 1796, so, you know, one might think that this is maybe cutting down a ton of trees or killing a bunch of animals or something. No, it is, uh, there's no definition, there's just a synonym. We're not going to talk about this yet. We're going to wait until we get to the S's because the synonym is the word sodomy. Would you think that that would be it when you hear crime against nature? I wouldn't have thought of that, but it sure makes sense when I can think about what that word is. Um, Basically, it's the thought 
you know, with this phrase, crime against nature, it's the thought that uh, there are natural things and there are unnatural things. And those unnatural things are a crime against nature. But I think many people would, uh, me included, would argue that. This is a very subjective phrase and word. Okay, next. Ah, ah, ah. Next is criminal. You could have it be three syllables, criminal, or two syllables, criminal. Criminal. First form, adjective from the 15th century. One, relating to, involving, or being a crime. As in, criminal neglect. Two, relating to crime or to the prosecution of suspects in a crime. As in, criminal statistics. Also, brought criminal action. Three, guilty of crime. And then also, of or befitting a criminal. What is befitting a criminal? As in, a criminal mind. M-I-N-D. Four, the synonym is disgraceful. Criminally is an adverb. And what does the etymology? Uh, it's basically, yes, again, Latin crimen, which means crime. I think it's interesting that here they put just crime, but then in the word crime, the etymology, it said Latin, same word, crimen, but it, it had other words, accusation, reproach, and crime. I don't know why they did that, but they did. Okay. Ha, ha, ha. Next is the second form of criminal noun from circa 1626. One. One who has committed a crime. They are a criminal. No, it's criminal. Number two. A person who has been convicted of a crime. I bet a lot, there's a lot more people who are technically criminals than one would ever think because sometimes when people are young, they are still learning about themselves in the world and they, they do things that they shouldn't do and then they get caught. So, you know, it could have been just a simple like, uh, get arrested, you get out a couple hours later kind of situation. Sometimes it's more, but, um, technically they're a criminal. So there are many people. I don't know why I just wanted to say something about the word criminal, and I didn't know what else to say. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Next is criminal conversation. Oh, here's criminal conversation. Crimcon. What is it? Two words, noun from 1732, and it is adultery considered as a tort. Okay, well, I'm kind of tempted to look up tort. I know that there's tort law. I think that's a thing. Uh, boy. So, do do we want to say quickly or do we want to just ignore it? Ooh, I just flipped to a page that has some fun words on it. Um, let's see. Well, we're, we'll just we'll just skip it. If you want to learn about tort, go go ahead. This is adultery considered as a tort. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Next. Ah ah ah. Criminal court, two words, noun from 1678, a court that has jurisdiction to try and punish offenders against criminal law. That's the place where they go talk about all these things and the people get punished. Criminal court. Ah, ah, ah. Next is criminalist. Criminalist, noun from 1951, a specialist in criminalistics. That's a fun word. Criminalistics. So a, a one who studies criminalistics and knows a whole bunch of stuff about criminalistics is a criminalist. And would you like to learn more about criminalistics? Maybe you will become a criminalist after the next minute or so. Ah, ah, ah. Criminalistics. You could also just say criminalistics again you can take out that uh, extra syllable you, it's basically the letter i why would you get rid of the letter i criminalistics no it's criminalistics much better okay noun from 1943 
application of scientific techniques in collecting and analyzing physical evidence in criminal cases. Application of scientific techniques in collecting and analyzing physical evidence in criminal cases. Well, that sounds pretty interesting. Is this what they still... I think... Um, oh, why am I blanking on the word? Uh, forensics. That might be what this is now. Although it doesn't say that that's a synonym. So maybe they are slightly different. But yeah, you, you get the, the physical evidence from criminal cases and you collect it and you analyze it and you use science techniques to study it. That sounds like forensics to me. Maybe uh, maybe that's what it is. That is a fascinating study, a fascinating topic. Ah, ah, ah. Next is criminality. Noun from 1611. One, the quality or state of being criminal. You've got so much criminality in you. Can you just stop? T- Can you stop being criminal? Number two, criminal activity, as in urban criminality. So the activity in the urban area is urban criminality. Ah, ah, ah. Next is criminalize, or also, again, just criminalize. Criminalize. Uh, This is a verb from circa 1956. It is transitive. It's just to make illegal, but then also to turn into a criminal or treat as a criminal. So to make illegal, um, if you you make walking down the street illegal, then you have criminalized walking down the street. Or... If you turn someone into a criminal, you know, maybe there's somebody who has never committed a crime before and then you convince them to commit a crime. You have criminalized that person to turn them into a criminal uh, or then treat as a criminal. That one too. Criminalization, that is a noun. That is the act of turning somebody or making something illegal. Turning somebody into a criminal or making something illegal. Ah, ah, ah. Criminal law is next. Two words, noun from 1769, the law of crimes and their punishments. All of the laws of the crimes and the punishments that go with them. Ah, ah, ah. Next is criminal lawyer. Two words, noun from 1869, a lawyer who specializes in criminal law especially a lawyer who represents defendants in criminal cases. They, the the people who, uh, the criminals, they need somebody to defend them to say, hey, I know all the law things and I'm going to try and help this person not uh, go to jail or have to go to jail for very long. Uh, So you you need a criminal lawyer because they know all the ins and outs of all the laws and the punishments and things. Ah, ah, ah. Next is criminate. Criminate. This is a transitive verb from 1645. The synonym is just incriminate. Incriminate. That's the one that I'm familiar with. I have a feeling, you know, this is more of just an old school way of saying it. uh, Because, you know, it's related to all the crime criminal words. Uh, why they added the I-N, though, I'm not entirely sure. Some some English language reason. Uh, crimination is a noun. And the etymology, let's see, it is from, well, here, again, Latin. Uh, well, let's see, it's the Latin verb criminari, which is from the word crimen, which we have seen before in this episode, and that means accusation. So in this context... They are using the English definition of accusation, or I should say the English translation of accusation for the Latin word crimen. But then in the other one, you know, they used crime. Criminate. Okay. Ah, ah, ah. Next is, it's not a crime word. Criminy. C-R-I-M-I-N-I. 
It is a variation of crimini. Now, I think I'm saying this word wrong, though. Is it crimini? I'm looking back. I never know how to say this word. Where did it go? Hello, come on, where are you? Uh, I think it's crimini. Yes, crimini. That's the mushroom. So you could spell it C-R-E or C-R-I. Uh, uh, uh. Next is, this might be the last of the criminal, nope, not quite. It is criminology. Uh, hey, Ali Ward, if you're listening, go do an episode about this word. Criminology, noun from 1872. The scientific study of crime as a social phenomenon of criminals and of penal treatment. And that's, uh, the penal treatment is uh, the, the punishments. Uh, criminological is an adjective. Criminologically is an adverb. And criminologist is a noun. This is from Italian criminologia. I don't know how to say it. Criminologia. Uh, from Latin again, crimen. And that is that for that. Criminology. Ah, ah, ah. This, I think, yes, I think this is our last crime word. It is criminous. C R I M. I-N-O-U-S, criminous, adjective from the 15th century. The synonym is just the word criminal. So this is very old. Criminal, criminous. Can you imagine calling somebody a criminous? That seems, it's adjective actually. So I take that back. Um, If we go back to the adjective form of criminal, it was things like criminal neglect, criminal statistics, a criminal mind, etc. Not the person. Uh, so yes, that makes a little bit more sense. Criminous. But it just, it's a funny word. Ah, 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 ha, 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 ha. Our last word is criminy or criminy. C-R-I-M-I-N-Y. It's an interjection from 1681. This is used as a mild oath or to express surprise. Uh, <laughs> criminy or criminy. I think I like uh, criminy. Um, so this is perhaps an alternative of a few things, or at least a couple things. Jiminy or Gemini. Jiminy is like Jiminy Cricket, J-I-M-I-N-Y. And then Gemini is G-E-M-I-N-I. Um, and uh, let's see, that's... Are those other languages? It says perhaps alternative of Jiminy or Gemini, mild oath, probably a euphemism for the lower Latin uh, Jesu or Jesu Domine, which means Jesus Lord. And there's an exclamation mark. That's why I said it like that. Jesus Lord. Um, so Jesu Domine I don't know exactly how to say Jesu, but that's close enough. Uh, That somehow got changed to Jiminy or Gemini, theoretically, and then that got changed to Criminy or Criminy. What a a fascinating story. I just think it would be funny if people said out loud, Jesus Lord, in just very... um, non-religious contexts okay so the words in this episode were crimcon crime crime against humanity crime against nature criminal 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 conversation criminal court criminalist criminalistics criminality criminalize criminal law criminal lawyer criminate criminy crimini criminology criminus and criminy. Wow. Uh, Let's see. Well, I mean, obviously I could just go with the word crime because it contains all, all of these are sort of within that bubble. Um, Hmm. Criminy. That's a fun word and it's not crime related. Um, I don't know. I think I might pick crime against humanity because, you know, that's terrible. 
and we need to do whatever we can to stop things like that from happening. I feel like right now, you know, you're listening to this after the end of April in 2022, but I'm recording this in the middle of March, and this this whole Russia-Ukraine thing is going at full speed, and, uh, you know, it's it's... If it isn't already a crime against humanity, it sure feels like it could be. Not to sound depressing or uh, anything like that. Pessimistic, but um, yeah, I don't know. Please don't do a crime against humanity. Please don't do a crime against humanity. That would be really bad. All right, well, that is the end of this part of the words. And uh, I guess I will just quickly say... Uh, no, maybe I'll wait for that tomorrow. It's not. It's just a little personal stuff. Nothing big. Nothing important. This episode is already too long. All right. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the new episode of the podcast called The Dictionary. I am your host, Spencer. That's me. Let's talk about the words. The first word in this episode is crimp. C-R-I-M-P. First form, verb, from 1712. Uh, Let's see. I believe it is just transitive. Number one, to cause to become wavy, bent, or pinched. As, 1A, to form into a desired shape. And in this case, the the thing that you might be forming into a desired shape is leather. 1B, to give a curl or wave like that of natural fibers. And the thing that you might be doing this to is synthetic fibers. 1C, to pinch or press together uh, in order to seal. And uh, that might be, (laughs) this is great, the thing that you might be pinching or pressing together might be the margins of a pie crust. Just yesterday, as I'm recording this, was pie day. Uh, So that's crimp. Yeah, you got to crimp the pie crust. Number two, to be an inhibiting or restraining influence on. And the synonym is cramp. As in, sales have been crimped by credit controls. And that is from Time. Time magazine? Crimper is a noun. This is from, I think it says Dutch or Lower German, krimpen, with a K, and that means to shrivel, akin to Middle Dutch cramp, with an E, which means hook or cramp. You can, you can, yes, you can crimp so many things, from hair to pie. Okay, this uh, the sound effect is going to be a reference to a word later in this episode, but it's going to be a very, very bad sound effect, so I apologize. It's just going to be something like... It's just, I don't know. We'll, we'll work on it, I guess. It's not going to get much better. Next is the second form of crimp, noun from 1863. One, something produced by or as if by crimping. As, 1A, a section of hair artificially waved or curled. Artificially being that you put something in your hair to make it wavy or curly. Maybe it was curlers. Maybe it was a machine that squeezes it all to make it wavy. Maybe it's something else. It's it's crimped. 1B, a succession of waves, as in wool fiber. 1C, a bend or crease formed in something. I guess if you just uh, bend or crease a piece of paper, you could say that it's a, there's, the, there's a crimp in the paper. Number two, something that cramps or inhibits. And the synonyms are restraint and curb. You better crimp your something there, buddy. Next word is the third form of crimp, noun from 1758. A person who entraps 
or forces men into shipping as sailors or into enlisting in an army or navy. Hmm. A person who entraps or forces men into basically being sailors or in the army or navy? Crimp? It says it's perhaps from the first form of crimp. What would that be? Which one of these definitions? To cause to become wavy, bent, or pinched? To be inhibiting or restraining influence on? I don't know if either of those makes sense, but that's what it says. Fourth form of crimp, transitive verb from 1812, to trap into military or sea service. Ah. Uh, and then the synonym is impress. I don't think that's the one where you'd say, oh, that's so impressive. Not that one. It's uh, something else. To trap into military or sea service, I mean, that's the one, it seems like the, the, the noun crimp, the person who's doing this, it seems like it should have come from that one, but the etymology says it's coming from the first form of crimp. And then the fourth form, the, the verb one, doesn't have any etymology. But anyway, if you're trapping somebody into the military or sea service, you are a crimp and you are crimping. Next is crimpy, adjective from 1888, and the synonym is frizzy. If I let my hair go a little bit longer, it can very easily get frizzy and crimpy. I guess it's naturally kind of crimpy because there's naturally some cur uh, curls that are in it, but that's not until it gets to be a certain length. It's definitely getting there, though. I might need to get a haircut in the next couple weeks. Next word is crimson, first form, noun from the 15th century, any of several deep purplish reds. Crimson. I don't know if I would personally say purplish. I mean, it's definitely getting into the purple area, but mostly just a, a deep red. Hey, maybe I'll post a picture of crimson on Instagram and Twitter at DictionaryPod is that handle username thing. You can go find it. Um, the etymology isn't very helpful, but I will read it because there are some interesting words. Uh, from Middle English, crimison. From Old Spanish, crimison. Also from Arabic, kirmizi, with a Q. And then also kirmiz, which means kermes, with a K. But I'm not sure what Kermes means. I'm sure I'm sure it's in the book here somewhere. Crimson. Crimson. Uh, well, actually, we're going to get to uh, something interesting because I was just about to sing a song, but I will hold off on that. Okay. Second form of crimson. Adjective from the 15th century. It's just of the color crimson. Um, and it does say that the um, the pronunciation is crimson with a Z sound, but I guess you could maybe also say crimson, but that sounds a little bit weird. Crimson. Crimson. Third form of crimson, verb from 1601, starting with transitive, to make crimson. How do you make something crimson? You just paint on it? Are there other ways to make something crimson? And then intransitive is to become crimson, especially the synonym blush. Ah, uh, yes. If you are blushing, you are you are becoming crimson. Your cheeks are becoming more crimson because the blood is flowing to your cheeks. Uh, so, uh, yes, that is how you can make something crimson. Make somebody blush. Haha, -ha, I've crimsoned you. Next is... Crimson and clover, over and over. It's actually just crimson clover. Two words, noun from 1839. An annual European clover that has cylindrical heads of crimson flowers and is cultivated in the U.S. especially as a cover crop. The scientific or species name is Trifolium Incarnatum. And uh, I think we may have to post a picture of this to see what it looks like. See 
how crimsony these flowers are on these cylindrical heads. <sighs> Next is cringe. I think my sound effect might make you cringe, although that's not the one that it's, it's referencing. First form of cringe, verb from the 13th century. Um, let's see. I believe it is just intransitive. One, to draw in or contract one's muscles involuntarily, as from cold or pain. Oh, it is so cold or I'm so painful. My muscles are contracting involuntarily. They, cr they cringe. Number two, to shrink in fear or servility. Three, to behave in an excessively humble or servile way. Four, to recoil in distaste, as in, Americans cringed at the use of a term now regarded as a slur. And that is a quote from William Sapphire. Oh, uh, well, I could guess as to what word they are talking about, but I will not do that. Uh, but yes, these days, uh, if it's, you know, if a word has become a slur, a derogatory slur, then yes, many Americans, many people around the world will cringe at, the, at, at hearing it. Uh, a synonym for the whole word cringe is fawn, F-A-W-N, and cringer is a noun. There is a hair or a fuzz on this microphone. There we go. I got it. Uh, cringe, etymology from Old English, kringon, which means to yield, from Middle High German, krank, looks like crank with Ks, and that means weak. <laughs> Second form of cringe, noun from 1597, a cringing act, and then specifically, a servile bow, so bowing to somebody uh, as if, maybe not as if you were a slave, but that you are willing to serve them. Um, so, yeah, but, yeah, cringy things, not a fan of that. Um, okay, next. It is cringe-worthy, one word, adjective from 1977. So embarrassing awkward or upsetting as to cause one to cringe as in a cringe worthy performance mm, yeah yeah if somebody is doing something that feels uh embarrassing in any way like yeah like a cringe worthy performance or something i i definitely uh i, I feel bad for them i get it gets very cringy mm, i can't think of any specific examples off the top of my head but you know, maybe we don't need to be reminded of them anyway if it's cringeworthy. What's what's something that you like that's cringeworthy? I don't know if we like anything that's cringeworthy. Okay, next. It is the word cringle. C-R-I-N-G-L-E. Noun from 1627. A loop or grommet at the corner of a sail to which a line is attached. So this is this is a boat, a sailing word, a loop or grommet at the corner of a sail. So it's, it's like a hole on the sail, and then you can attach a thing to it. And it is called a kringle. Um, and it is called kringle because it is from the lower German word kring, which means ring. That's how you can remember what a kringle is. Because the word ring is in there. Next word. I can't do it. It is the word crinkle. And yes, this is the one that I was sort of trying to emulate. But it's extremely hard to make a realistic crinkle sound with your mouth. I can't do it. First form. Verb from the 14th century. Starting with intransitive. There is another hair on this microphone. I have not cleaned it off for a while. Come on. Where did you go? The light is like shining and the bad, the wrong spots. Anyway, there's a bunch of them. I'll do it later. Uh, okay, crinkle. 1A, starting with intransitive, 
to form many short bends or ripples. Number 1B. This synonym is wrinkle. Crinkle and wrinkle. Number 2. To give forth a thin, crackling sound. And the synonym is rustle. I can't do it with my face. Um, as in, crinkling silks. And now transitive, to cause to crinkle, or make crinkles in. I can, I can crinkle the paper. Yeah, that's a much better sound. My, my mouth can't do that. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna actually make any, uh, bends or creases or things. Um, let's see, the etymology... Okay, it's from the Old English Kringon. Again, there was one of those uh, cringe. Cringe had the same one. Um, Kringon, and that means to yield. How How that's... how I don't know how those are connected. Also, uh, Middle English, crinkalen. With, it's spelled fun. Okay. Much better sound. Second form of crinkle... Noun from 1596. Number one, synonyms are wrinkle, corrugation, and pucker. And we learned corrugation, or something that's corrugated, it comes. It just means wrinkled. So yeah, wrinkle, wrinkle, pucker, crinkle. Cor- wrinkle, pucker, wrinkle, and wrinkle. I don't know. No, no. Okay, two, any of several virus diseases of plants marked by crinkling of leaves. So that's uh, that's a good thing to know. I don't know which kinds of uh, plants that can suffer from this, but if you see leaves that are crinkled, maybe they have, they got the crinkle. Crinkly is an adjective. Next word is crinoid. Noun from 1847. Any of a large class of echidnoderms. Did I say that word right? Echidnoderms, yep. Usually having a somewhat cup-shaped body with five or more feathery arms. And then it says compare to the synonyms, or maybe not synonyms, feathery star and sea lily. Crinoid is also an adjective. This is from Greek crinon or crinon, And that means lily. And the class name is crinoidea. There is a picture of a crinoid. This looks like, did it say it's a... Didn't say if it was in the water. (coughs) So sorry, excuse me. Um, It doesn't say if it lives in the water, but I'm sort of guessing that it does. It doesn't tell me. Um, But it, uh, yeah, it just looks like it's um it there's the bottom of the plant and there's some roots and it's got these very feathery arms that look like they wave in the wind or the water and that's that that's all there is to it uh, this one has four eight this one has 10 arms and maybe we'll post a picture of a crinoid okay last word so many crinkles Uh, Okay, this is crinolin, C-R-I-N-O-L-I-N-E, crinolin, noun from 1830, one, an open weave fabric of horsehair or cotton that is usually stiffened and used especially for interlinings and millinery. And number two, a full stiff skirt or underskirt made of crinoline, also the synonym hoop skirt. Uh, Crinoline or crinolined with an ed, that is an adjective. And uh, where does this come from? Why do we call it this? It is from Italian crinolino, from crino, which is horsehair, which is, let's see, so crino horsehair, is from Latin crinus, which means hair, plus lino, which means flax or linen. Uh, so flax and linen, 
plus hair became horse hair. Uh, also from the Latin linum. And there's more at the word crest. So let's read the first definition again. Open weave fabric of horsehair or cotton that is stiffened and used to put in other things, I guess. Yeah, I don't know anything about this because I've never worn a hoop skirt. All right, so the words in this episode were crimp, 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 crimpy, crimson, 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 clover, cringe, cringe, cringeworthy, cringle, crinkle, crinkle, crinoid, and crinoline. I think I might just pick cringeworthy as the word of the episode. Uh, I feel like this word, cringy and cringeworthy, I feel like those have been, I don't know, for some reason I feel like they've become much more popular in the recent years uh, because, I don't know, maybe because of the internet and we've people are posting pictures and videos constantly all over the world that maybe we can see more cringeworthy things. And usually, cringeworthy things are the things that uh, are going to get shared a lot and people want to see because we have schadenfreude, so we feel better about ourselves when something bad is happening to somebody else. And so, you kind of want to watch something that's cringeworthy uh, because it makes you feel better about yourself, maybe. Cringeworthy. Cringe worthy. I feel good that I'm not you in that cringy situation. Okay, that is the end of this episode. All the words have been said. And uh, since, you know, I'm taking a little bit of extra time to not talk about the holidays and maybe talk about my life, if you want to hear it, I put it at the end. Um, I mentioned a while ago that we got some films, film, some films transferred from the late 70s and early 80s and I've been watching through them and I just finished going through uh, uh, the first chunk of them with my parents to make sure that I had all the dates right and you know try and get it in chronological order and I don't know I was just doing that an hour ago so it's on my mind but yeah someday someday I will probably put a handful of them on uh, public YouTube uh, because, you know, the, some of the ones with a lot of other people, they get complicated. But if it's just me, or maybe me and my sister, maybe we'll let you see them. And then you can laugh at us because we were such dumb kids. Uh, okay, that is it. Thank you very much for listening to me yammer on about things. And until next time, you're going to have to wait for it for tomorrow. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome, whoa, whoa, <laughs> the heck got loud. Uh, hey, how are you doing? I'm checking the levels on the mic, and I think that is fine. Whoa, okay, uh, I was not ready for that. So, uh, hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. This is the podcast by Spencer, who is uh, reading this book. That, that's all it is. That's all it is. Uh, I think we need to turn this down a little bit more. Okay. So, the first word, if, uh, if you have any suggestions, creative thoughts, uh, opinions, wants on things that I should do on this podcast, you can, you can tell me those things. I am open to suggestions because I don't think of everything uh, or always the best things. So, you can email me, dictionarypod at gmail.com, or if you want to go the, uh, the Instagram or Twitter route, my handle is at DictionaryPod. It's so creative. Uh, there's a Google Voice number. I usually say these things that, you know, sometimes I do. Um, I got to turn on the light because I won't be able to see these words. Um, and, uh, yeah, just let me know what you think I should do if you have any strong opinions. I think it would be fun someday to, to do this live streaming, live in person. Uh, obviously, I need to have more guests on. Maybe for the D's, I will put more effort into that. We'll see. Um, yeah, 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 that's all. Okay, so the first word in this episode is Criollo. Criollo, or you can say it Criollo without the L sound. It is spelled C-R-I-O-L-I-O, -I -I and I think that that's an I. Yes, it kind of looks... Actually... I think it might be a double L. 
think we need to break out the phone again and double check. The phone can see better than I can. Uh, yes, it is a double L. C-R-I-O-L-L-O. So that's why you can say it either Criollo. That's more American way to say it, I think. Or you can say it Criollo, which is the more authentic Spanish way to say it. So that's how I will say it. It is a noun from 1604. 1A. A person of pure Spanish descent, born in Spanish America. Spanish America? Uh, which which countries would those consist of? I assume it's just about everything south of the United States. Uh, but, you know, there's Portuguese in there. I'm sure there's a ton of other languages, actually. You know, more old uh, Mayan, Incan languages, possibly, a little bit. Hopefully, we haven't lost those completely. Uh, so, yeah. They're totally Spanish, and they live in Spanish America, and they are a, a they are what? They are a criollo. Number 1B, a person born and usually raised in a Spanish American country. 2. A domestic animal of a breed or strain, as of cattle, developed in Latin America. Uh, and then, uh, if it's capitalized, it is probably... Any of a breed of hardy, muscular ponies originally developed in Argentina. And I just always think it's funny that they use the word developed. Uh, all right. It's, uh, it's like a cattle, muscular ponies in Argentina. Argentina, Latin America, uh, animals like cattle can be called a criollo. Oh, a criollo is also an adjective and... This is, of course, a Spanish word, and there is more at the word Creole. I think my voice cracked a little bit there. Yeah, that was, uh, let's see. This is, I, I will try to remind all of us a little bit more. A uh, person of European descent born, especially in the West Indies or South, uh, sorry, Spanish America. And then there's French in there, too. It's the, it's the one that has really tasty food. Uh, okay, this sound effect is going to be... Next word is cripes. Oh, cripes. Interjection from 1910. It is used as a mild oath. And we just saw mild oath in the last couple of episodes. Was it criminy? Yeah, criminy. Mild oath. What is what is a mild oath? <laughs> I'm sure it's not terribly confusing, but when I think of oath, I think of like an oath you take, the Hippocratic Oath. Uh, so what is it? What is a mild oath? Can't wait to find out. Uh, yes. And again, it just says it's a euphemism for Christ, just like I think criminy was criminy or criminy and cripes. I think I, I do. I like, I think I like cripes better. I think that's more likely. I'm going to say cripes than criminy. Neither one are very likely to be said at all, but if I'm going to pick one, I think I'm going to pick cripes. Although criminy, criminy is, it's a very good word. Next word is cripple. Yeah, cripple. First form, noun from before the 12th century. 1A is sometimes offensive. A lame, uh, no, not lame, lame with an M. A lame or partly disabled person or animal. Uh, 1B, one that is disabled or deficient in a specified manner. A very specific way, as in a social cripple. I guess that would be that somebody who's not very good in social situations, which is often me, although I'm really trying to get better. I've been trying forever. Um, so, let's see. Uh, d disabled or deficient? I don't know. What are some other ways? I can't. I can't. Uh, number two, something flawed or imperfect. I hope the etymology is helpful. Mm, sort of. Uh, let's see. From Old English, creopon, which means to creep. Hmm. And there's more at the word creep. So, you know, maybe not. So, like, if you, I guess creep isn't slow. Uh, if they, if somebody's disabled in their legs, maybe they walk slow. Here's the thing. People can be physically uh, differently abled in lots of different ways. 
Uh, so this this word cripple, because it comes from creep, I feel like is very, it's too specific. Uh, it's also just not a very nice word anymore. I don't think. Next is the second form of cripple, adjective from the 13th century, being lame, flawed, or imperfect. I don't think this is a good thing to say to anybody. Uh, you know, of course, if you self-identify in this way, that's fine. But uh, to call somebody lame, flawed, or imperfect, I guess it doesn't have to be a human, but usually it is. And yeah, it's just nobody wants that negativity. They don't need that. They need to be given some positivity. Now we have the third form of cripple. This is the verb form from the 14th century. Uh, Let's see. Is it just transitive? Yeah, I think it must be. One, to deprive of the use of a limb and especially a leg, as in the accident left him him crippled. Hmm. Yep, that's what that is. Number two, to deprive of capability for service or of strength, efficiency, or wholeness. I like the whole thing, the s this of the whole, as in an economy crippled by inflation. There are more synonyms. We have the word maim and weaken. Crippler, what is that word? Crippler. Crippler is a noun that would be a very weird name for a superhero or a the antagonist of a superhero, the villain. That's the word that we typically use. I am the crippler. No, we don't want that one. Cripplingly is an adverb. Next word is crisis. Noun from the 15th century. Many parts of the world are always in crisis, and it is not good. Okay, 1A. The turning point for better or worse in an acute disease or fever. The okay, so there's a point. It's with you. It's like the point of no return. Maybe not really, uh, but there's a point probably near the end of a disease or a fever that that journey that that disease or fever is on, and at a certain point, it's gonna go either better or worse for the patient, uh, and that's called crisis. It's it's a crisis. It's a situation. We need to do something. More likely, if it's bad for the patient, we'll need to do more. That's why we typically think of crisis as a bad thing, probably. Uh, Okay, 1B. A paroxysmal attack of pain, distress, or disordered function. Whatever that is. 1C. An emotionally significant effect or radical change of status in a person's life. Emotionally. It's a very significant event to your emotions. Or there's a radical change... Uh, of your status, your status in your life, maybe up, maybe down, the emotions are going crazy. We have those sometimes. Uh, that is a crisis. Again, it might not be a negative thing. It could be a positive thing, 50-50 probably. Um, but uh, yeah, maybe not. I don't know. What are, what's the percentage there? Is it 60% more likely to be a negative thing? Of course, we're using very you know, there's a lot of meaning behind these words. Positive, negative. Anyway, where are we? Oh, we have an example. A midlife crisis. I think I may be going through one. Number two, the decisive moment, as in a literary plot. 3A, an unstable or crucial time or state of affairs in which a decisive change is impending, especially one with the distinct possibility of a highly, highly undesirable outcome, as in a financial crisis. Yes, we just often think of it as a bad thing. Uh, but, you know, you, further down the road, it'll end up being better than it was, you know, it's like one step back and two steps forward. Crisis leads to a different crisis, a positive crisis. Okay, we are on... Did I? I don't think I read this one. Uh, 3A. Maybe I did read it. We're just going to read it again. An unstable or crucial time. Oh, yeah, we totally read that one. Especially 
one with the distinct possibility of a highly undesirable outcome. Can't stress that enough. 3B, a situation that has reached a critical phase, as in the environmental crisis. Yeah, that is what we are living through right now. Uh, We are at a point globally where we have to do something because it's you got to do something now it's either going to go real negative or it maybe won't be so negative so hey let's do that let's do the thing that's less likely uh, but will be much better for our future or we can decide to go the bad way that won't be fun for anybody uh synonym c the word juncture that's another one yes that's that's a more uh, neutral neutral sounding to me we're at a juncture which way are we gonna go this is from greek crisis with a k it literally means decision we are in a crisis moment we have to make a decision what way are we gonna go uh, from Corinne, which means to, de- to decide, and there's more at the word certain. You might decide something, but is it certain that it will happen? Sometimes, it's, you know, it started from this word decision, but uh, a lot of times it's, it's not a decision you make. It sometimes is made for you, and that's what I think makes them often a lot harder. Because you weren't in control. Okay, Next word is crisp, the first form, adjective from before the 12th century. Number one, the synonyms are curly and wavy. Yuck, 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 yuck. Crisp, crisp, curly, wavy? Hmm, maybe. I don't know if I would pick that. Also, having close, stiff, or wiry curls or waves crunchy. What? Is that an actual? Oh, no, I skipped a line. <laughs> or waves crunchy. We call them crunchy waves. Those waves are so crunchy. Uh, No, it just ends with waves. Having close, stiff, or wiry curls or waves. 2A. Easily crumbled. The synonym is brittle, as in a crisp cracker. Oh, yes. Crispy things are very brittle. 2B. Desirably firm and crunchy. There's the crunchy. Desirably firm and crunchy, as in crispy lettuce. 3A, notably sharp, clean cut, and clear. Like all those C sounds. As in, a crispy illustration. Also, concise and to the point. Yes, we need to keep our our communication clear and to the point and crispy. As in, a crisp reply. (laughs) I'm pretty good with those. One syllable. How you doing? Good. That's nice and crisp. 3B, noticeably neat, as in crispy new clothes. Uh, 3C, C. the synonyms are brisk and lively, as in a crisp tale of intrigue. Also as in crisp musical tempi. Now is that the plural of tempo? Tempi? Tempi? 3D, Briskly cold, <laughs> briskly cold, as in crisp winter weather. Also, the synonyms fresh and invigorating, as in crisp autumn air. Also, as in a crisp white wine. Mmm, it's so crisp. 3E, deftly and powerfully executed, as in a crisp tennis serve. A synonym is the word fragile or fragile. Crisply is an adverb. Crispness is a noun. How much crispness do you have? Let's see. From uh, akin to the Welsh word crish, C-R-Y-C-H, and that means curly. Uh, Yeah, no, no idea how to pronounce that word. Next is the second form of crisp. It's a verb from the 14th century, starting with transitive. One, the synonyms are curl and crimp. Two, to cause to ripple, and a synonym is wrinkled. No, just wrinkle. I imagine potato chips. 
that are rippled and wrinkled. Ruffles have ridges, and they are crispy. Number three, to make or keep crisp. Now we have intransitive. Number one, synonym is curl. Two, synonym is ripple. Three, to become crisp. I, I shall become so crisp. Third form of crisp, noun from the 14th century. 1A, something crisp or brittle, as in burned to a crisp. Would it not be burnt? Also as in rye crisps. Oh, well, those, those are the best things. Everybody knows this. That's why Giardetto's, however you pronounce it, they made an all rye crisp bag, which is really the, all you need in that bag. I'm pretty sure I've eaten just the bag of those things. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. 1B. This is chiefly British. The synonym is just potato chip. Yeah, as an American, I've always thought that was a little funny. You call them crisps. And then chips are fries. So fries equals chips equals crisps. Do we call something crisp that they call something different? Do we call fries? Do they call fries? I don't know. Um, Okay, that is usually used in plural. Yeah, crisps. Number two, a a baking dessert of fruit with crumb topping, as in apple crisp. My, I love, I love the top, the crispy, kind of maybe little crunchy top of a, some an apple thing like that. That is one of my favorite desserts, especially when it's a little crunchy but and sweet. Ooh, that's one of the best things. Next we have crisp bread, one word, noun from circa 1927, a plain, dry, unsweetened cracker made from crushed grain as wheat or rye. Nothing about crisp bread. Next we have Crispin. Is it Crispin Glover? No. This is a verb from 1931. Transitive, to make crisp. Uh, And then intransitive, to become crisp. To make crisp, to become crisp. I don't know why that's funny, but it is. Crispin. Uh, Okay. Next is crisper. Noun from 1835. Isn't there a NASA acronym? No, no, no. Crisper. That's the thing where they do the uh, the gene, the gene editing, the gene splicing, the learning about the gene stuff. Uh, That's crisper. I think it's capital S. No. C-R-P-S-R. It must be. I should learn what that stands for. I can never remember it. Okay, this crisper, though, this is a noun from 1835, one that crisps, especially a closed container in a refrigerator intended to prevent loss of moisture from fresh produce. You must keep those veggies crisp. Next, it is crisp head, which I think is just a very silly word. Uh, This is one word, crisp head. Noun from 1966. The synonym is iceberg lettuce. And we got one more. It is crispy. Adjective from the 14th century. One. It is the number one definition for the word crisp. Curly? Wavy? Um, As in crispy hair. Number two. Appealingly crunchy. And the synonym is crisp, as in crispy fried chicken. Crispiness is a noun. Oh, let's see. Okay, the words were criollo, cripes, cripple, 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 crisis, crisp, 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 crisp bread, crispin, crisper, crisp head, and crispy. And there is a cat. That is her vote. Her vote. Um, well, I'm either going to pick, I think, crisp or crispy. Which one? Well, I, I think I'll just pick crisp, the all-encompassing crisp. Um, all three forms includes crispy uh, because, well, I don't know. I, you know, I love potato chips, and those are 
called crisps in uh, Britain and other British countries, and that's those are good. Uh, and there was something else. Um, and then also, uh, oh, and then the apple crisp, that was the other one. But also, uh, this is a very stupid thing I said when I was a kid, but I got very tanned as a kid. Uh, in the summer, I'd get super, super tanned. Not anymore. But uh, I remember telling somebody when I was probably eight or seven, and I was like, I'm, I want to get so tan, I want to be crispy. And for some reason, that just stuck with me. I just think it was a very silly, why would you say you want to be crispy? No, that means you've been burnt. It's a very dumb kid. Uh, okay, that is it for this episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. Welcome to the dictionary. Spencer's going to read you the stuff. Hey, if you uh, could share this uh, podcast with all the other people that you know out in your world of things, and uh, you can see you've got to subscribe to it, follow it on Apple Podcasts, go write a review and give it a five star rating on whatever platform you're listening to this on. If you want to watch it on YouTube, you can go do that. The link is in the show notes. Um, you can follow me on social media. Instagram and Twitter is at DictionaryPod. Email is DictionaryPod at gmail.com if you want to talk to me. There's also a Google Voice number in the show notes, and you can call it and leave a message. And there's a Patreon, and you can go give me a few bucks a month and get episodes very, very early. Let's see. This episode that we're gonna uh, that we're gonna I'm gonna be presenting to you today. It is airing on April 29th, 2022, and today I'm recording this on March 26th, 2022. I'm uh, I'm I'm very far ahead, which is good because who knows what life will bring me. Uh, okay, let's get to the words. Uh, I I'm I if I can't think of a good sound effect, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do a very standard like whoosh or something very generic that's going to be i think my my default going forward because i can't come up with a good one right now okay the first word in this episode is crisscross c-r-i-s-s-c-r-o-s-s one word first form crisscross will make you jump jump this is a verb from 1818 starting with transitive one, to mark with intersecting lines. It's an X, a Chris, and a cross. Number two, to pass back and forth through or over. Uh, through or over what? Like a net? Intransitive, one, to go or pass back and forth. Two, synonyms are overlap and intersect. Um. Yeah, this is... Uh, it, oh, oh, interesting. This is from Christ Cross. Yeah, Christ Cross. Well, that's obsolete, um, which is, uh, it just means the mark of a cross. So, well, you know, uh, this is this is fascinating to me. So Christ was on a cross, and that's the mark of the cross, and the cross is a Chris and a cross. It's been Christ crossed, Chris crossed, it's an X. It's intersecting and overlapping the two the two pieces. Wow. I I never would have thought of that. Okay. Whew. Second form of crisscross adjective from 1840, marked or characterized by crisscrossing. Yeah, that's it. And then crisscross is also an adverb. That's an adverb. Hmm. Wouldn't it be crisscrossly? No, nah, maybe not. Now we have the third form of crisscross, noun from 1833, one, a crisscross pattern, and the synonym is network. Two, the state of being at cross purposes, and then also a confused state. I am often, I guess, crisscrossed? My brain is crisscrossed? There's things going from the right brain to the left brain, and not talking to each other, and I'm so confused. I don't know what that was. Woo! Next is 
Krista, C-R-I-S-T-A, noun from 1959. Any of the inwardly projecting folds of the inner membrane of a mitochondrion. So there are folds in the inner membrane of a mitochondrion and they project inwards. And those are the Krista. Uh, It is Latin, which means crest. And there's more at the word crest. Next is CRIT, C-R-I-T. It is an abbreviation for critical criticism or criticized. Critical criticism criticized. Uh, Of course, you got to look at the uh, the context. Next is criterion, criterion or criterion. C-R-I-T-E-R-I-O-N, noun from 1622, one, a standard on which a judgment or decision may be based. This must be in the legal world. Two, a characterizing mark or trait. I said that it was probably part, uh, probably in the legal world. I think that, yes, that is true, but it's also definitely a word that we use in uh, the non-legal world in standard standard communication. Um, and then a synonym is the word standard. Standard. Let's see. Uh, this is from Greek criterion, which with uh, that has a K from krinin, which means to judge or decide. So you are judging or deciding things based on that thing. And then there's more at the word certain. We have some usage information for this word, criterion. The plural, criteria, with an A. Uh, so I let me backtrack. Um, it does say at the beginning here that the, the plural can be either criteria or criterions. Uh, so the plural, criteria, has been used as a singular for over half a century. As in the quote, let me now return to the third criteria. That is from R.M. Nixon, Richard Milhouse Nixon. So at some point, he used the word criteria as a singular. He had multiple criteria, but then he called them each criteria. We have another example. Uh, it's another quote. That really is the criteria. That's from Bert Lance. But there's more usage information. I'm not going to leave it at just that. Many of our examples, like the two foregoing, are taken from speech. But singular criteria is not uncommon in edited prose, and its use both in speech and writing seems to be increasing. Only time will tell. <laughs> I don't know why. It just there's there's a breakdown between the writers of the dictionary and the reader. And I just, I, I don't know, they, this, they, they broke down the fourth wall here a little bit. Only time will tell whether it will reach the unquestioned acceptability of agenda. Agenda? Oh, is that the plural of agendum or something? Oh, boy, I don't remember that. Let's see. Let's go back to agenda. What did it say? Uh, if I can find it, maybe I will be able to have a better better knowledge of what is going on. I don't know. I just wanted to find it. Uh, agendum. Um, yeah, the plural is agenda or agendums. Um, but it doesn't say... Let's see. There's no, like, agenda. There is, there, there's agenda. The new blah, 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 blah. Ge- oh, boy. There's not, not as much information as I was hoping. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, okay, next whew, next is criterium. So the, the last word was criterion, O-N. This is criterium, U-M. And you can also pronounce it criterium. What? So you can say criterium or criterium. Noun from 1970, it is a bicycle race of a specified number of laps on a closed course over public roads closed to normal traffic. Uh, 
Would the uh, the Tour de France, would that be a criterium? Uh, this is French, and it means competition, or literally criterion. Hmm, that's interesting. So it's, it is related to the last word, I guess. Okay. Next is critic. C-R-I-T-I-C. First form. We're going to have a, a handful of critic and critical words coming up. Noun from 18, no, 1588. My brain saw all those eights. Number 1A, one who expresses a reasoned opinion on any matter, especially involving a judgment of its value, truth, righteousness, beauty, or technique. There's a lot going on there. So critics of movie, movie critics, uh, obviously that's the first thing I think of because I'm such a big fan of the films, uh, but people can be critical, be critics of anything, but what are they doing? They are expressing their opinion on any matters like the value of the thing, its truth, its righteousness, its beauty, or its technique, and there's probably other things too. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a person who just gives their opinion. We're all, we're all sort of critics. Uh, yeah. 1B, one who engages often professionally in the analysis, evaluation, or appreciation of works of art or artistic performances. Uh, I think what, what some people like to say is that a lot of times critics can't do the, the works of art, so then they just talk about the works of art. To be perfectly honest, I feel like I would be a better critic than a, a maker of things, but I want to make things too, but, uh, but yeah, I don't know, yeah, okay, but I'm not a very good writer, and I am not an extremely opinionated, although I have gotten more opinionated as I have gotten older, especially when it comes to, like, movies, okay, number two, one given to harsh or captious judgment, this is from the Latin word criticus, which is from the Greek Criticos, uh, which, wait, critic, Criticos, which is from Criticos, wait, is that literally the same word? Criticos, from Criticos, which is able to discern or judge. So if you're just able to discern information about a thing or just judge a thing, uh, then you are, you are critical. You are a critic. Whew. Next is the second form of critic. Noun from 1651. Number one is archaic. The synonym is criticism. It's just a, an old way to say criticism. Number two is also archaic, and the synonym is critique, spelled with a Q-U-E. C-R-I-T-I-Q-U-E. And, uh, okay, from Greek, critiki, critiki, which means art of the critic. Art of the critic. What sort of art is the critic making? Is are they are they able to make art by criticizing other art? Is that their art? That's the th art that they're good at. Whew. Hey, we have one more word for this episode, and this is going to get a little bit weird because uh, it does go over significantly to the next page. So what I'm going to do is read, I'm going to finish reading the definitions, but there's a whole big section of synonym information, and I'm actually going to save that for tomorrow's episode. So, you know, it's a little bit weird, but just the way that these fall on the page, it just makes sense for me to do it that way. Okay, critical. Did I say the word even? C-R-I-T-I-C-A-L, critical. Adjective from 1547. There's a lot of definitions. 1A, of, relating to, or being a turning point or specially important juncture, as in a critical phase. We are at the critical phase of this juncture. As 1A1, relating to or being the state of a disease at which an abrupt change for better or worse may be expected. Also, being or relating to an illness or condition involving danger or death. 
This is reminding me of a word we had recently, and it's been over a week since I recorded, so I cannot remember what word it was, but there was something that was very similar to this, and I can't remember what it was. Something, and I feel like it was, was it crisis? Maybe it was crisis. Uh, That was just yesterday. The turning point for better or worse, yes, this was it, uh, in an acute disease or fever crisis. And so now we're at critical. Uh, Okay, so we are now on, oh boy. Okay, so I missed some examples. Uh, So the last thing I said was being or relating to an illness or condition involving danger of death. I think I said that. As in critical care. Also as in a patient listed in critical condition. It's very critical. What what direction is their condition going to go? Is it going to go good or is it going to go bad? Now we have 1A2 relating to or being a state in which... Wait, what? Relating to or being a state in which or a measurement or point at which some quality, property, or phenomenon suffers a definite change. Very definite, as in critical temperature. 1b, the synonyms are crucial and decisive, as in a critical test. Maybe this is the test to determine whether or not you go to college or get into a class or become... um, a, uh, an EMT or a firefighter or a police person or something like that. It's a very critical test. 1C, the synonyms are indispensable and vital, as in a critical waterfowl habitat. That habitat is extremely vital to the waterfowls. It's a very odd example of an animal to put in there. But you got to you got to mix it up. You got thousands of examples to put in this book. You got to make it interesting. Also is in a component critical to the operation of a machine. If somebody takes a thing apart to see how it works or to fix it and then they put it back together again and there's a piece that they didn't put in there, oh, was it a critical piece? Was it not a critical piece? You won't know until you try the thing again. Hopefully it was not critical, but, you know, chances are, if it's got the thing in there, it's probably a critical piece. 1D. Being in or approaching a state of crisis. Yes, there's that word crisis. As in, a critical shortage. Also as in, a critical situation. I think, unfortunately, we are getting rather close to or already in critical situations with the climate. Also, water. A critical water shortage is inevitable, kind of, unless we uh, really change our ways drastically. And now let's talk about 2A. Inclined to criticize severely and unfavorably. It's being, you're being very critical of me. You if hey, you if you want to be critical of me and my podcast and how I talk and what I say and all that, that's totally fine. But um, you know, go write it up in a review. Maybe you can say five stars, but then you can be be negative in the text. To be consisting of or involving criticism. It's not always negative though. Sometimes it's positive. We usually at least I usually associate critic critical with a negative thing but it doesn't doesn't technically have to be um, as in critical writings and then we have also of or relating to the judgment of critics as in the play was a critical success the critics were very happy with this play so it is a success based on the criticism of the critics This is a weird word. Uh, To see, exercising or involving careful judgment or judicious evaluation, as in critical thinking, something that many people are lacking in. I think even I often lack in critical thinking, but I try. I I think we all should be a little bit better with our critical thinking skills. 2D, including variant readings and scholarly 
emendations, as in a critical addition. 3a. Of sufficient size to sustain a chain reaction, and this is used of a mass of fissionable material, as in the example, a critical mass. I definitely heard that phrase, a critical mass. What does it what does it mean? What is it? What is it? It's a sufficient size to sustain a chain reaction. Typically we're talking about material that can be uh uh broken apart. It's nuclear, a mass of fissionable material. 3B sustaining a nuclear chain reaction, as in the reactor went critical. Criticality is a noun, critically is an adverb, and criticalness is a noun. Can we make this podcast a critical success? Hey, critics out there, go write up some positive stuff about this. Hey, you know what? You, even if you're not if you're not a critic, your job isn't to be a critic, you can still be critical of things and write your reviews, and of course we prefer them to be positive. So we are not going to read the synonym information. There's no etymology. So now is the time that I have to reread the words and tell you what I think the word of the episode will be. So we had crisscross, 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 Krista, crit, criterion, criterium, critic, critic, and critical. I'm debating between criterion and one of these critic or critical words. Um, the criterion collection is a, what is it? Is it a company? Is it a, it's something that, um, basically is very critical they are they are critical about films and they say these films that we decide to present to you are the greatest ones for some reason um and so we are we are saying that these films are the criterions that all other films should be based on is that a is that an accurate assessment of what they do um i have not seen a lot of criterion versions of films um, you know, they'll, they'll remaster films, you know, older films, they, um, they will release, uh, DVDs and Blu-rays that have a ton of extra features, which I think is awesome. I've honestly not watched very many of those, but I love to see the behind the scenes stuff. And then they, uh, they have a website and they have a streaming channel, um, that you can watch these films and then all the extra features are there. So you don't have to buy the disc. You can just stream it. Um, I think that's pretty great. And I, I really should take more advantage of that uh, that platform because there's so many good movies out there and some of them are old and I've never heard of so many of them and they're arty films and foreign films and old films. And I so I strongly suggest that everybody go check out the Criterion Collection in whatever form you can. But I still don't know what the word of the episode is. Uh... Yeah. Well... Let's see. I mean, critic, the whole idea of being critical of a thing is interesting. Um, looking ahead, uh, you know, it's like, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. What do I, what do I, okay, let's, let's do, um, let's just do critic as the word of the episode. Critics, I don't know, maybe they sometimes get a bad rap. I think a lot of people, they're just like, hey, I can get paid to write about films for a, a publisher platform newspaper whatever it is um i think it would be kind of fun to do that but i got i don't know anyway let's sing a song about critics critics make the world go round they talk about art and stuff with their opinions their opinions their opinions matter to some people but not everybody yeah okay Hey, that is it for this episode. We finished page 296, and then we go to 297, and then who knows after that. Oh, look, there's a cool, um, there's a uh, pictures of crosses, 20 crosses. We're going to get there soon. Hey, thank you very much for listening. I love you all. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary Thank you all for joining me. 
Uh, this is the top of page 297. It is also the last day of April when this is airing, so that is something to celebrate, I guess. Uh, hopefully here where I am uh, in the Chicago area, the, the weather is getting nicer. It should be much nicer by now. Uh, the, the leaves, the plants, everything should be growing. I love that time. All the, the plants and the leaves and the flowers are budding up, and it's so great. But there's a lot of rain. There's a lot of rain. It's not my favorite thing in the world, but it does make the world go round, almost literally. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Let's read this. Okay, so yeah, this is weird because uh, yesterday we ended with the word critical, but the synonym information was not read. And so we're going to start this episode with synonym information, and we're going to end this episode with synonym information because we got more at the end. Okay, so uh, critical, I guess, is the first word, C-R-I-T-I-C-A-L, and the synonym information says critical, hypercritical, fault-finding, captious, carping, and censorious mean inclined to look for and point out faults and defects. Critical may also imply an effort to see a thing clearly and truly in order to judge it fairly, as in a critical essay. Hypercritical suggests a tendency to judge by unreasonably strict standards, as in hypercritical disparagement of other people's work. You just, you just feel bad that they're making stuff better than you, so you're being just hypercritical. Maybe you should enjoy it and be nice to them. Fault-finding implies a querulous or exacting temperament, as in a fault-finding reviewer. You're just trying to find the problems with the things. You know, if they're there, that's fine, but you don't, you just, God, you don't need to go looking for faults, do you? Captious, C-A-P-T-I-O-U-S, captious suggests a readiness to detect trivial faults or raise objections on trivial grounds, as in a captious critic. Carping implies an ill-natured or perverse picking of flaws, as in a carping editorial. And censorious implies a disposition to be severely critical and condemnatory, as in the censorious tone of the review. Severely critical. And condemnatory means they are condemning that thing. Maybe they're trying to censor it. That's why the word it's the word censorious. Um, and then, in addition to all of those synonyms, we have another one. It is the word acute. A-C-U-T-E. Okay, uh, I guess I'll just, the sound effect is going to be a bump. Next word, critical angle. Two words, angle is A-N-G-L-E. Noun from 1873. The least angle of incidence at which total reflection takes place. I'm a little confused. The least angle of incident. So is that the lowest angle? Uh, okay. So, okay. I think I think I get it. In pool, billiards, you can do a bank shot. You can hit the cue ball off of the wall, the bank, the thing, and, uh, and it's going to bounce back at the same angle it went in. So if you hit it onto the wall at a 45-degree angle, it's going to bounce off at the equal angle on the other side, the opposite equal angle. Does that make sense? Okay, but critical angle, there is a, there is the, um, what's the lowest angle that you could hit it on the wall to bounce back at the equal angle? Uh, you know, is it one degrees? Is it five degrees? It's going to be a very shallow hit against the wall that's going to bounce off that equal same shallow angle, um, but anything below that, it won't it won't bounce off in the same way. I think this makes sense. I think so. That's critical angle. Bump. Next is critical mass. Two words. Noun from 1919. A size, number, or amount large enough to 
to produce a particular result, as in the critical mass of activity needed for a retail store. Uh, so in this case, the a retail store needs a certain amount of people and purchases every day to at least break even, if not make money. So that's the critical mass. What is the critical mass for uh, this podcast to become known out in the universe? Boom. Next word is critical point. Two words, noun from circa 1912. A point on the graph of a function where the derivative is zero or infinite. Um, if you look at these, all of these things, critical angle, critical mass, critical point, we've got more coming up. Um, you know, this is all about the juncture where something goes one way or the other. Uh, the, it's the juncture point where it becomes a positive or a negative or whatever, whatever the context is. This is the thing that is critical. <laughs> That's a great way to describe it, Spencer. Good job. Okay. Boom. Next word is critical region. Two words, noun from 1951. The set of outcomes of a statistical test for which the null hypothesis is to be rejected. Yeah, I mean, you got, you got to reject that null hypothesis in this critical region set. Bump. Next is critical value. Two words, Noun from circa 1909, the value of an independent variable corresponding to a critical point of a function. It's all, it's all mathy things. Bump. Next is criticaster. I think you would just say criticaster. Noun from 1684, it is an inferior or petty critic. An inferior or petty critic. So this is a critic, a critic who is very petty, or they're just inferior. They're not. They're not as good as the other critics. Maybe they are. They, they are a criticaster. There's no etymology. It would be very helpful if there was, but we know that the word critic is in there. Not sure why aster is at the end. Boom. Next word is criticize with an s at the end. It is the British variation of criticize with a Z, which will be the last word in this episode. But first we have, bump, criticism. Hmm. <laughs> Noun from 1607. 1A, the act of criticizing usually unfavorably, as in seeking encouragement rather than criticism. I want you to talk me up. I want you to give me encouragement and say I'm doing all these great things instead of being critical or giving me criticism, which is going to say all these bad things. But you can you can be, have constructive criticism. That is a very helpful thing to do. You say, well, this is the thing that you maybe didn't do so good, but it's constructive. I'm going to give it to you in a way that uh, suggests ways that you can improve it or make it better. I bet you have a lot of criticism about this podcast and me. Maybe you can make it, turn it into constructive criticism, and maybe I'll listen to it. I've used it in the past. I have. I've listened to people. Okay, 1B. A critical observation or remark, as in an unfair criticism. 1C. The synonym is critique. Number two. The art of evaluating. Oh, I'm sorry. This, this word is making me sleepy. The art of evaluating or analyzing works of art or literature. Also, writings expressing such evaluation or analysis, as in an anthology of literary criticism. Three, the scientific investigation of literary documents, as the Bible, in regard to such matters as origin, text, composition, or history. The scientific investigation of literate, so uh, in regard to such da, 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 origin, text, composition, or history. So it's looking at a piece of literary document from a scientific standpoint to see how accurate it really is 
in origin, text, composition, or history. Yeah, uh, what what is the what is the where well, we're not going to get into that. Okay, boom. Our next and final word for this episode is criticize. C R I T I C I Z E. This is a verb from 1643. First is intransitive, to act as a critic. You are criticizing, you are acting as a critic. And transitive, number one, to consider the merits and demerits of and judge accordingly. To consider the merits and demerits of something and then judge it accordingly based on those merits and demerits. The good things and the bad things, you're going to look at all that stuff and then say, well, this is how I'm going to criticize that thing based on those things. A synonym is the word evaluate. Number two, to find fault with. Point out the faults of. That's not always a very nice thing to do. We talked about that before. Criticizable is an adjective and criticizer is a noun. A criticizer is criticizing something that is criticizable. And as promised, we have synonym information. It's our favorite. Criticize, reprehend, censure, reprobate, condemn, and denounce mean to find fault with openly. You're finding fault with something openly with all these words. But criticize implies finding fault especially with methods or policies or intentions, as in, criticized the police for using violence. When it is not appropriate, yes, they should be criticized for that. That's a whole, that's a whole big conversation. Reprehend implies both criticism and severe rebuking, uh, as in, reprehends the self-centeredness of today's students. Why, why, these, why students of today got to be so self-centered? What's the point of that? Censure carries a strong suggestion of authority and of reprimanding. As in, a senator formerly, formally, ugh, hate those words, why, why? A senator formally censured by his peers. His peers also have authority and they will reprimand him for something that he did. Reprobate implies strong disapproval or firm refusal to sanction, as in reprobated his son's unconventional lifestyle. Ugh. Yeah, this happens. Unconventional. What does that mean? It could mean a lot of things. Maybe you should talk to your son and under try to understand his unconventional lifestyle and maybe just don't be so mean about it. Depends on the situation, I guess. Condemn usually suggests an unqualified and final favorable judgment, as in, condemned the government's racial policies. And denounce adds to condemn the implication of a public declaration, as in, a pastoral letter denouncing abortion. Wow, those last two examples especially... We, we, we could talk about that for days. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, oh, boy, I got opinions. Just a couple of days ago, um, at the time of recording, I think both Tennessee and Idaho announced new bills very similar to Texas um, about restricting abortion to all these things, and then people can sue other people. And, oh, boy, it just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to get political, but come on, come on. Okay, on that note, let's read the words we had. Critical, critical angle, critical mass, critical point, critical region, critical value, criticaster, criticize, criticism, and criticize. Uh, let's see. Ooh, maybe maybe criticism. I'll pick criticism. It can be positive or negative. Usually it's negative, 
but um, I don't know. It's uh, there's always criticism going on. Either you're criticizing a person one way or the other, or there is art that be is being criticized for whatever reason because people feel like they want to. I don't know. That's the thing that's happening. We all we all do it, whether we're aware of it or not. What is the word? Criticism. 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 Let's be critical of art and make some criticism. Criticism. You know, art's art is made for for different people for different reasons. You you may not love it, but that's fine. You there's probably something else that you love. So maybe just don't be so critical of things. I don't know. Hey, that is the end of the episode. Thank you for listening to my musings about the little bits of things that I read. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. It is the podcast where I read the book, The Dictionary Book, and then I say some things about it at the same time. Uh, Okay, let's just get into it. The first word is critique. C-R-I-T-I-Q-U-E. Let's see. You can, I guess you can say critique or crit critique. Eh, uh, that, it is, it's just a very slight difference in the pronunciation. This is the first form, noun from 1710, an act of criticizing, especially a critical estimate or discussion, as in, a critique of the poet's work. You got, you, yep, we talked a lot about criti- being, critis- cr- being critical and criticizing and criticism and all that in the last couple episodes. So when you are critiquing something, it is a critique. Next is the second form of critique. This is a transitive verb from 1751. To examine critically, and the synonym is review. As in, critique the plan. After I watch a movie, I critique it in my head, or maybe even while I'm watching it, I'm critiquing it. When I talk about it with people, we are critiquing it. Next is critter. C-R-I-T-T-E-R. Noun from 1815. And the synonym is just the number one definition for the word creature. Creature, critters, they're the same thing. I've never seen that movie, Critter. Well, there's a lot of, there's a bunch of them, aren't there? There's got to be at least two or three or four or five Critter movies. But I really want to watch them. Critters. Next is C-R-N-A, all caps. This is an abbreviation for Certified Registered Nurse Anesthetist. Certified Registered Nurse Anesthetist. And that can't say those words. Next is, it's my sound effect. It's the first form of the word croak. Verb from the 15th century starting with intransitive. 1A, to make a deep, harsh sound. 1B, to speak in a hoarse, throaty voice. Hmm, hmm. Number two, the synonym is the number one definition for the word grumble. Number three is slang, and the synonym is the word die. They croaked. I wonder how that happened. How did croak become synonymous with dying? Uh, So yeah, now we have transitive, number one, to utter in a hoarse, raucous voice. And, of course, horse, in this case, is spelled H-O-A-R-S-E, horse, like, what's my, my horse voice? If I were sick, it would be a horse voice. If I, if I speak very low, it's a kind of horse. Number two is slang, and the synonym is kill. So the transitive is kill, you are making something die, and then the intransitive is die, you, that you are the thing that is dying. Croak and croak. 
second form of croak, noun from 1561, a harsh, harsh cry or sound. Croaky is an adjective. What's croaky? This is croaky. Next is croaker, noun from 1648. Al croaker. Number one, an animal, as a frog, that croaks. Two, any of various fishes, and especially the drums that produce croaking, drumming, or grunting noises. Wait a minute. Something didn't didn't click there. Any of various fishes, and especially the drums that produce croaking, drumming, and grunting noises. So do the fishes also produce these noises? But then there's also drums that produce these noises? Do fish make noises? What sound does the fish make? Bubbles! Number three is slang, and the synonym is doctor. Wait, you call a doctor a croaker? Because sometimes people die under their care? Is that what the connection is that we're supposed to make? Or is there something else? I don't know. Next is Croat. Croat or Croat? Capital C-R-O-A-T. Croat. Noun from 1657, and the synonym is just Croatian, which, of course, we will read next. A Croat is also an adjective. Um, yeah, so uh, it's, it's from the Croatian and Serbian word Hrvat, which, of course, I don't know how to pronounce that word, H-R-V-A-T. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just the shortened version of Croatian. But you don't say Croatia, you say Croat, because that's how it's spelled. So that's a little weird. Next is Croatian, with a capital C, noun from 1555. One, a native or inhabitant of Croatia. Number two, a South Slavic language spoken by the Croatian people. The Croatian speakle what was that word? The Croatian people speak Croatian. It's amazing. Croatian is also an adjective. Next is croc. C R O C noun from 1884, and the synonym is just the word crocodile which will be the first word in tomorrow's episode. Crocodile. Uh, Okay, where were we? Uh, Next is the first form of crochet. It looks like it's pronounced crotchet, but it's not. It's crochet. Noun from 1844. Needlework consisting of the interlocking of looped stitches formed with a single thread and a hooked needle. Okay, will I remember that it is with a single thread and one hooked needle? Probably not. What's the other thing? Crochet and... Mm, can't remember. Um, but I, the other one, I think, uses two needles and two two threads, maybe? No, I'm not so sure. Maybe that's a single thread, too. But I think the bigger difference is how many needles. One needle, two needle... Can you do three needles or four needles? That would That's like 3D chess. How do you do that? Oh, uh, yeah, so crochet is a French word that means hook or crochet. Uh, let's see, from the Middle French diminutive, it's the diminutive of croche, which means hook. It is of Scandinavian origin. It is akin to the Old Norse croaker, which means hook. So I think the other one, which of course I still can't remember the name of it, um, is two needles and they do not have hooks. This one is a single needle with a hook at the end. So crochet, it means hook, and that is why it's that. I hope that helped you. Second form of crochet, verb from 1854, starting with transitive, to make a crochet, as in crocheted a doily. That's a great word, doily. And then intransitive, to work with crochet. You gotta you gotta crochet the crochet to make a crochet. And crocheter is a noun. Of course that looks just like crotcheter, but it's crocheter. 
the crocheter crocheting the crochet. Next is crocidolite. Crocidolite. It, uh, it is a noun from 1835. A lavender blue or light green mineral of the amphibole, amphiboly? amphibole group that occurs in silky fibers and in massive form and is a type of asbestos. And then it says compared to the word tiger eye, which it doesn't say if it's an antonym or a synonym, so I'm not sure. But uh, I know tiger eye, I think that's more of a uh, like a dark, like a black or dark brown, maybe bronzy, goldy colors. So maybe that's more of an antonym because I don't think tiger eye is typically lavender blue or light green. And I think it's interesting that it, it can be in uh, either massive form, whatever that means, or silky fibers. A mineral that is silky fibers. Maybe we have to find a picture of crocidolite. No, crocid. Yeah, crocidolite. Crocidolite. Um. So this is from the Greek crocodolith. I don't know how to say that word. Crocidolith. From crocid or crocus, which means nap on cloth. Akin to the Greek krekin which means to weave. Uh, there's more at the word real, R-E-E-L, for some reason. Crocidolite. Next is the first form of croc. Croc, 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 C-R-O-C-K. Noun from before the 12th century, one, a thick earthenware pot or jar. It's just a croc. Number two, um, it is a dialect word, and it uh, the synonyms are soot and smut, S-O-O-T and S-M-U-T. Um, and uh, this etymology says that it is from its formation on cooking pots. So you cook, you cook the stuff, and then the stuff that um, appears on there, you know, the the either from maybe the fire if it's cooked on a under a, or above a fire or maybe the food gets all cooked and baked on there that thing uh, soot and smut you just call that crock number 3 coloring matter that rubs off from cloth or dyed leather number 4 the synonym is bunkum b u n k u m and this is usually used with the word a or a, uh, as in, the story in the paper is a crock. It's like, it's it's fake, it's a lie. I think that's where we're going with that. It's a crock of something. The etymology for everything except number two is, uh, let's see, it is akin to the Old English cruise, C-R-U-C-E, which means pot or pitcher, from Middle High German K-R-U-C-H-E, Krush, but it doesn't say what that is, although I can assume that it probably also means pot or pitcher. It's a crock. Second form of crock. This is a verb from 1594, starting with transitive one. To put or preserve in a crock. You gotta crock some stuff in the crock. Number two is dialect. To soil with crock. And uh, the synonym is smudge. And that's probably related to that other one, which was dialect, in the last one, which was soot and smut. Soot and smut and smudge. And then intransitive, to transfer color, as when rubbed or washed. As in, a suede that will not crock. Third form of crock. Noun from 1528, one, one that is broken down, disabled, or impaired, as in, so many old crocs with one foot in the grave. And that is a quote from Angus Wilson. One that is broken down, disabled, or impaired. Number two is slang. A complaining medical patient whose illness is largely imaginary or psychosomatic. I wonder if that's 
related to this uh, the bunkum one. It's a lie. It's fake. That they the the person is a croc because what they think they have is just a croc. Uh, the etymology is Middle English croc with uh, just a K at the end. It is akin to the Lower German kraka, K-R-A-K-K-E, and that means broken down horse. And uh, I mean, I guess this uh, this patient one, c- complaining medical patient, maybe they feel kind of like a broken down horse. That's why it's it's in, uh, included in this number three, this third form of croc. Fourth form of croc. It is a transitive, nope, it's a verb, from 1839. To cause, to become disabled. So this is basically the verb form of the third form of croc, which is the whole broken down, disabled, or impaired. And then, you know, if we backtrack, the second form of croc is the verb form of the first form of croc, which is the noun. Okay, so back to the fourth form, which is the verb. Uh, That was transitive, to cause, to become disabled. And then intransitive, the synonym is just breakdown. Now we have the word crocked. Croc with an ED, crocked. Adjective from circa 1927. And the synonym is the 1A definition for the word drunk. I don't think I've heard of crocked in terms of being drunk. I've heard soused and wasted and there's so many other synonyms for that but crocked is another one why why is it crocked um maybe maybe they drank something out of a pot or a jar which is a crock next is crockery noun from 1715 the synonym is just earthenware And then, yes, that number one definition for croc is a thick earthenware pot or jar. So all of those those pots or jars that are earthenware are the crockery. Next is crockett. Davy Crockett? No. Number, uh, it's a noun. I don't know why I said number. Uh, It's from 1673. It is an ornament usually in the form of curved and bent foliage used on the edge of a gable or spire. What is this? A ornament usually in the form of curved and bent foliage used on the edge of a gable or spire. So it's just some foliage. Uh, Crocketed, crocketed, that is an adjective. That gable or spire is crocketed with crocket. Um, it is from Middle English, crocket, from Anglo-French. It means crook, diminutive of croc, which means hook, of Scandinavian origin. Yeah, it's similar to crochet. It's, it's the hook one. Uh, hmm, I don't know. I might, I might have to find a, a picture or more information because I want to visualize this. I'm a very visual person, so I need to see what this crocket is. Why did they name Davy Crockett Davy Crockett? Did he, was he very good with creating bent foliage on gables or spires i don't know okay we have one more word for this episode it is crock pot two words with a hyphen the first letters are capitalized it is a trademark and it is used for an electric cooking pot think that there are a lot of things that we call crock pot that are not officially the trademark crock pot uh, but we still call them Crock-Pot. Uh, yeah, we, we have one. Uh, the, the thing is, uh, broken, so the, it doesn't click, doesn't lock in, but it still works. But now we got a new thing that, uh, it, it does everything. It cooks everything. And we've only done a couple of things on it, but, uh, I think you can use it as a Crock-Pot because it's a pressure cooker too. Uh, okay. So what were the words in this episode? Do you remember? I don't, so I have to read them. Critique, critique, critter, C-R-N-A, croak, croak, croaker, croat, croatian, croc, crochet, crochet, crocilid, no, crocidolite, croc, 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 crocked, 
crockery, crocket, and crock pot. Crock pots are great. You put the stuff in maybe when you go to bed or when you get up in the morning. You just literally throw it all in there and then you set it to cook for four hours, six hours, eight hours, ten hours, whatever it is. You just don't really have to worry about it. I mean, you can stir it up if you want, but uh, it's so, it's just great. Uh, and then you've got a whole meal at the end. But is that what I'm going to pick as the word of the episode? I don't know. Let's see. What do we got? We got, I mean, critters. Those are critters are fun. We have two critters who live with us. Um, crochet. It's pretty fascinating what people can make with crochet. Uh, ooh. Yeah, let's pick crochet as the word of the episode. How do you crochet? I don't know. Nobody's taught me. Maybe I will learn someday. Hey, I'm really good at rhyming. That is the end of the episode. This is airing on the first day of May in 2022. Happy May. I hope it's a good May for you. Uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, there's some good words in tomorrow's episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to another episode of the dictionary. It's my podcast. It's not your podcast, but maybe you'll be on it as a guest someday. If you're really cool. Okay, so the first word in this episode is crocodile. C-R-O-C-O-D-I-L-E. Crocodile. Noun. From 1555. 1A. Any of several large, carnivorous, thick-skinned, long-bodied aquatic reptiles of tropical and subtropical waters. And then broadly, the synonym is crocodilian. And they are of the family crocodilidae. Is that how you say that? Crocodilidae. I think so. Any experts on crocodiles? Is that how you say that? Crocodilidae? Crocodilidae, crocodilidae. Okay, 1B, the skin or hide of a crocodile. I don't like that. That's the first time I think we've seen that. Why does that have to be in here? Number two is chiefly British. A line of people, as school children, usually walking in pairs. Okay, British people, why why do you do this? Why do you call that a crocodile? P- pairs of children walking in a line is a crocodile? Okay, what does the etymology say? Uh, let's see, Middle English, cocodril, from Middle Latin, cocodrilus. It's an alternative of the Latin, crocodilus, from Greek, crocodilos, with Ks. That means lizard or crocodile. From croki, which means shingle or pebble, plus drillos, which means worm. Okay, so the Greek word for lizard or crocodile is from shingle or pebble plus worm. Uh, I'm I'm not sure what that means. Um, But then we also have akin to the Sanskrit word sarkara, which means pebble. Pebble. How How are crocodiles like pebbles? Okay. Uh, maybe we need to go to Etim online to find out a little bit more information if there is any. I think that's fascinating. Worm, worm pebble, pebble worm? A crocodile is a pebble worm? I don't know. Um, <laughs> when, when we had the word alligator, did I say something about, we got a, what does it, is it, how do we know, how do we know the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? Because I know I will never, ever, ever remember. Um, Looking back, I know I've been told what the difference is. I'm sorry, this is very hard to do with kind of one hand. Um, But but I don't I don't ever remember. Okay, alligator. uh, It doesn't help that it's either of two crocodilians of uh, southeastern U.S. uh, They have broad heads 
not tapering to the snout, and a special pocket in the upper jaw for reception of the enlarged lower fourth tooth. Uh, but they are, So they are crocodilians, but they are specific crocodilians, and their mouth does not taper to the snout. Alligators' mouths do not taper to the snout. So I have to assume, okay, so their snout stays wide to the end. But a crocodile, I have to assume, their mouth does taper to the snout. But does it doesn't say any of several large carnivores, thick skin, large body, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't really give any specifics on physically what crocodiles are like. Because, probably because, alligators are crocodiles. And so they the word crocodile is too over overarching. There's too many things that fit in. So you can't give specifics on what they're like. Maybe it's that whole rectangles, squares, squares, rectangles thing. All right. What are we going to do for the sound effect today? Um, I'll just do, what am I going to do? I'm looking ahead. Is there anything? I don't know what the sound a crocodile makes, so I can't do that. I'll just go, hmm. Okay, the next word in this episode is crocodile bird. Noun from 1868, an African bird that is related to the pratincoles and lights on the crocodile and eats its insect parasites. Okay, what is this word pratincoles? P-R-A-T-I-N-C-O-L-E-S. Do you pronounce it pratkinoles? Pratkin, pratincoles. So they're related to those things. Um, and they they light on the crocodile. What does that mean? It, and lights on the crocodile and eats its insect parasites. You, you, we've all seen pictures of this probably. There the little there are lots of animals, especially in you know Africa, big animals, uh, crocodiles, rhinos. Uh, giraffes and elephants, they have little little bugs that live on them and, uh, you know, feed on maybe other little things. But then there's birds, usually birds, that will eat on those little insects, those insect parasites. Uh, so then they get a meal. It's a symbiotic relationship is what it is. The crocodiles and the crocodile birds. Um, so is the common name just crocodile bird? The scientific name is Pluvianus aegyptius. Aegyptius. That's with an A-E. Uh, yeah, those are crocodile birds. But now I want to see some crocodiles that fly. Hmm. Next is crocodile tears. When a crocodile does not have a bird to eat its insect parasites, it cries a little bit and it has crocodile tears. No, this is a noun from 1563, false or affected tears. And then also hypocritical sorrow. Um, I, yeah, fake, fake tears, I think, is the more, uh, the general idea of that. Oh, you're just crying crocodile tears. You're not really, you're not really sad or it's fake or something. Hypocritical sorrow. What does that even mean? Your sorrow is a hypocrite? Hmm. Next is crocodilian. Crocodilian. Noun from 1837. Any of an order, crocodilia, of reptiles, including the crocodiles. See, here we go. The crocodiles, alligators, caimans, gharials, and related extinct forms. And then crocodilian is an adjective. Yeah, so that's why the crocodile definition did not say what they look like because they can look like crocodiles, alligators, caimans, gharials, or things that don't even exist anymore. Although, all of those things that still do exist have existed really unchanged for millions and millions of years. I mean, they're kind of like... They're kind of like dinosaurs that that live today, but much smaller than they used to be. Uh, okay, that is crocodilian. Crocodilian is also an adjective, if I didn't say that. Hmm. 
Next is Crocus, C-R-O-C-U-S, noun from the 14th century. 1A is plural. Oh, no, no. So the plural of this word crocus is crocuses, but the plural for 1A is just crocus or croci or croci or croci, whichever one you want. So what is this crocus? Any of a genus, crocus, of herbs of the iris family developing from corms and having solitary long-tubed flowers and slender linear leaves. They're, they're of the iris family, crocuses. Maybe we should post a picture of a crocus, or maybe croci, or croci, or croci. 1B, it is the 1A definition for the word saffron. 2. A dark red ferric oxide used for polishing metals. Uh, what? Does it come from the plant? Is that why that's a thing, or is it something completely different? And if it's com- something completely different, why why does it have the same name? What does the etymology say? Uh, it is a Middle English word, and it means the saffron plant. From Greek, krokos, it is of Semitic origin, akin to the Akkadian word kurkanu, which means saffron. Do people say saffron or saffron? I like saffron. So it's saffron. Hmm. Next is, it's pronounced Croesus, but it is spelled capital C-R-O-E-S-U-S, Croesus. The O-E makes an E sound. Noun from 1621, Croesus is a very rich man. And this is from Croesus, who was a king of Lydia, and he was famed for his wealth. I'm not sure what Lydia is, but uh, Croesus was the king of it. Hmm. Next is Croft, C-R-O-F-T. Noun from before the 12th century. Number one is chiefly British. Actually, number two is as well. So this whole thing is chiefly British. A small enclosed field, usually adjoining a house. A small field next to a house. You can get to the field from your house, and the field is called a croft. Number two, a small farm worked by a tenant. And crofter is a noun, which is also chiefly British, and maybe the tenant is the crofter. The crofter is the one who uh, tends to this small farm. Uh, Let's see, this is akin to the Middle Dutch word Crocht, K-R-O-C-H-T, and that just means hill. So maybe it just used to be a hill. Hmm. Next is Crohn's disease. Two words, capital C-R-O-H-N, apostrophe A, apostrophe S, and then the word disease. Noun from 1935. A chronic inflammatory disease of the gastrointestinal tract that typically involves the distal portion of the ileum and is characterized by cramping and diarrhea. So if you if you want to learn a little bit more about uh, what the distal portion of the ileum is, you can go look that up. Um, but, uh, but okay, so yeah, basically, um, it's a problem with your guts... And uh, I'm just putting this in very simple terms for myself. It's a problem with your guts that it can be painful and you poop a lot, uh, specifically diarrhea. So people with this condition, with this disease, uh, they if, if a poop is coming, a poop is coming. And they need a bathroom immediately. They need to know where it is and they need to get there immediately because it's going to happen whether they like it or not. Uh, so that is a problem. And, uh, you know, there's there's drugs and things, uh, maybe diet too, that they can do to help minimize these symptoms. But um, it's a big problem. It's a big problem. How does it happen? Is it genetic? 
It's a chronic inflammatory disease. Your your gastrointestinal tract has been inflamed. Chronic is just, it's all the time. Uh, this is from Burrell B. Crone. Burrell B. Crone, who was an American physician who died in 1983. So, um, yeah, he was I, the one who was like, this thing, I have... Um, I'm the one who gets to name it because because I can. I'm sure it existed well before he named it in 1935, but uh he was I don't know what what is the I, he was the one who was like, "Oh, all these people have the same thing, so I'm going to call it my disease." Hmm. Next, we're doing a whole a whole 180 here. It is the word croissant. You can pronounce it Croissant, croissant, croissant. So this one, this pronunciation, it says K-R-W-A for the first part, croissant. But see, whenever I try and say it all French and fancy, I say croissant. There's no R sound in there, croissant. Um, But this one is showing an R, which is hard for my mouth to say. Usually I'll just say croissant. But, you know, yeah, sometimes you say Croissant. Noun from 1875. It is a flaky, rich, crescent-shaped roll. And it is very tasty. I could sure go for one right now. It is a French word, if you couldn't tell, and it literally means crescent. It is from the verb, the French verb, croistre. Uh, We must have had the same thing when we had the word crescent, maybe. Croistre, it means to grow. (laughs) Yeah, I remember being confused by that. Why grow? Is it because it's small on the ends and then it grows in the middle? Uh, And then from Latin, crescere, and there's more at the word crescent. Give me a good croissant. Let's get a croissant. Where can I get a croissant right now? I don't think I have any. Hmm. Next we have... See, this, this is a, a, they're doing the same thing. K R W A for the pronunciation. It is croix de guerre. Croix de guerre. It is three words. The first word is capital C R O I X. That's pronounced croix or croix, if you want to get that R sound. Then de, and then guerre, spelled G U E R R E. Noun from 1915, a French military decoration awarded for gallant action in war. By the way, de, that second word de is de, not du, or some other vowel that you might want to put there. This is French, and it literally means war cross. So maybe, uh, yeah, the decoration, it's probably in the shape of a cross, a crisscross. Croix de guerre. It's the cross for war. Hmm. Next is croaker sack. Croaker sack. Two words. Croaker is K-R-O. No, there's a K coming up, but no. C-R-O-K-E-R. Noun from 1895. It is chiefly southern, and it is a sack of a coarse material like burlap. That's all it is, just a burlap sack, a croaker sack. Why? It is because it is an alternative of crocus sack or crocus bag, which is of unknown origin. Thank you. That did not help at all. Crocus sack or crocus bag. I wonder if uh, that's related to this saffron plant. Did they, maybe they used to put crocus in it? Hmm, interesting. Next, hmm, Cro-Magnon, Cro-Magnon, I think you emphasize the mag, Cro-Magnon, or, and I never thought about this, because of the way Magnon is spelled, you can also pronounce it cro which is a very French way and probably the more accurate way to say it, cro it is spelled capital C-R-O hyphen capital M-A-G-N-O-N. Noun from 1869, and it is a hominid, 
of a tall, erect race of the Upper Paleolithic known from skeletal remains found chiefly in southern France and classified as the same species as present-day humans. And that same species is Homo sapiens. That's what we are. And also, cro are Homo sapiens. Um, okay, so, it is from cro which is a cave near Le... Le Aises? How do you say this? It's near a town in France. Spelled L E S, second word E Y Z I E S. Aises. I wonder if this was the cave. There was that uh, documentary that um, that guy made. Who's that guy? I want to think of his name. Um, anyway, he's that. He's either German or Austrian, and he's made a bunch of films and documentaries and. Uh, he he made this documentary about the um the caves in France and the handprints and the art that they made and uh, I don't really remember a lot of details about it but I did see it. Um, wh- his name starts with a W. Whoa, oh, man, it's pissing me off that I can't think of it. Uh, but you know who he is. Uh, Crow Manion. Next word. Hmm. It is Kromlek. Kromlek. Sounds like something that somebody made up for uh, an alien language or alien word or something. Maybe it's it sounds Klingon. C-R-O-M-L-E-C-H. Noun from 1895. Number one. This synonym is dolmen. It sounds like another fake word. D-O-L-M-E-N. Number two, a circle of monoliths, usually enclosing a dolmen or mound. So I'm thinking of, um, what is that thing? My brain just shuts down. Anything that's not related to what I'm thinking about in the moment, I just cannot think of. You know, Stonehenge. Is Stonehenge a cromlech or a domlin or something like that? A circle of monoliths. Yeah, it's probably a cromlech. Uh, it's a Welsh word, and it literally means bent stone. Um, and obviously, you know, I think Stonehenge is in Scotland, so it's not technically Welsh, but, you know, their language in that area is all all intertwined and related. Um, interesting. A dol- Enclosing a dolmen or mound. Uh, Stonehenge has gotten way more fascinating in the last probably 10 or 20 years. They've learned so much more about it. I suggest you go learn about that. Hmm. Next word is crone. C-R-O-N-E. Noun from the 14th century. It is a withered old woman. Look at that old crone. Uh, let's see. It is Middle English, and it is... It's a term for abuse? A term of abuse. Wait a minute. Is that what it means? Or is that what it is? From Anglo-French, caroin, charoin, which means dead flesh. Oh, great. Uh, and then there's more at the word carrion, which is, yes, that's like a dead a dead animal or something. Um, so I think what this is saying is that people would use this as a term of abuse to old ladies because their flesh was dying. Not, I'm not saying that that is literally what is happening, but that, I think, is uh, the etymology for this crone. That's not nice. We have one more word. Hmm. 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 It is cronus or cronus. Capital C-R-O-N-U-S. Noun from 1664, and it is a titan dethroned by his son, Zeus. So, Cronus was a titan and had a son named Zeus, and Zeus dethroned him. Uh, Yeah, Latin from the Greek, Kronos, with a K, and that's it for that. Uh, I definitely feel like I've heard Kronos used in other things in media trying to think of where i would have heard it but i won't be able to think of it 
But you usually think of Zeus as being the main of the Greek gods, the main dude. But uh, but Zeus has a dad. <laughs> Zeus's dad is Kronos. Did Kronos have a dad? What's the family tree? It's very complicated. All right, so the words in this episode were crocodile, crocodile bird, crocodile tears, crocodilian, crocus, croesus, croft, Crohn's disease, croissant, croix de guerre, croaker sack, cromanion, cromlech, crone, and cronus. I am very torn about what to pick. I mean, crocodiles are pretty amazing. Obviously, we have to post a picture of that. Um, but, uh, you know, Crohn's disease and croissants, they're, they're very important to the, to the world. Crohn's disease is something that you need to bring more attention to. People need to know about it uh, and respect the people who suffer from it. Uh, colitis is a similar thing, which, uh, yeah, we probably be probably read that before um but you know you can't go wrong with a croissant especially if there's chocolate inside of it i want a chocolate croissant go give me a chocolate croissant there's never enough chocolate in a chocolate croissant it's so flaky and rich although chocolate croissants aren't usually in crescent form they're usually in rectangular form why why is that why can't why can't you make it a crescent all right that is going to be the end of this episode thank you so much for sticking around with this i hope that you have started this podcast from the beginning and worked your way up this has been spencer dispensing information goodbye hello word nerds welcome to this episode of the dictionary a phrase that has been said more times than the earth has rotated in its lifetime uh if you could please go subscribe and share and download go find this in all the places do all those things please and thank you it would make me feel like this is not for naught uh you can uh, message me tag me find me on social media Twitter, and Instagram. I don't have the bandwidth to do more things than that. Do you? Should I be on Twitch? Probably. Should I be on TikTok? Probably. Should I be doing stuff on YouTube? Probably. Will I get around to these things? Maybe? I don't know. Um, you can email me, dictionarypod at gmail.com. There is a Google Voice number if you want to show me your voice. I can hear it. And uh, what else? There's other things. There's the Patreon. I always forget that one. Uh, you can give me some money, and then I'll keep on doing this, and I'll give you episodes early, and I'll say, hey, you person, uh, you give me money, you can listen to this before the, the other seven and a half billion people on the earth. Uh, okay, I think that's enough of that. Let us uh, talk about the words in this episode. The first one is crony. C-R-O-N-Y. Noun from 1656, a close friend, especially of long standing. And a synonym is pal. You're my pal, old buddy, old pal, old crony. Uh, this is perhaps from Greek, chronios, which means long lasting. Ooh, from chronos, which means time. Who knew that the word crony had such a, a deep philosophical etymology dealing with time okay what is the sound effect gonna be i don't know let's find out together Weebity whoop 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 oh man am i gonna have to do that every time okay next word is cronyism noun from 1840 partiality to cronies especially as evidenced in the appointment of political hangers-on to office without regard to their qualifications um, so I think this is just the idea of, uh, letting people who just hang out, wait, what? I don't know what's happening. Um, yeah, you've got like your crowd of people, the people who have been hanging around you for a while, and then you like give them, uh, uh p like p political seats because they're your friends. Is that what it is? I guess. 
you got to look out for the people who look out for you. I don't know. I don't even remember the sound effect. Wibbidi boop boop ba doop. Something like that. That sounds about right. Uh, this is the word crook. C R O O K. First form. Um, verb from the 12th century. I feel like this is one of the shortest ones we've ever seen. There's so much, there's not a lot of information. Um, the first is the transitive definition, which is just the synonym bend, B E N D, like a crooked nose. There's a bend usually in that nose, a crooked cane, the crooked person. There's that whole poem in the horror movie. The crooked man with the crooked cat with the crooked hat and the crooked thing. And I don't remember how it goes. Um, okay. Intransitive verb. The synonyms are curve and... Hmm, would this be wind? I think it must be wind, not wind. Wind kind of makes sense, but I think wind makes more sense with curve and crook. Second form of crook... Noun from the 13th century, number one, an implement having a bent or hooked form as 1A. The synonym is pot hook, but it looks like you would pronounce it <laughs> pothook, 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 one of those. Uh, 1B1, a shepherd's staff. Yes, yeah, it's, it's probably, it's crooked because it's a, it's a, they probably got it off of a tree. It's just a branch. And then, then they used it as a staff. 1B2. Uh, let's see. It is the first, fo- uh, first definition of the word crozier. I assume it's pronounced crozier. Uh, let's see. Where is crozier? I uh, went, oh, we must have read it before. Why don't I remember it? C-R-O-S-I-E-R. Where is it? Oh, yeah, I keep on misspelling it, which is not surprising at all. Uh, Here it is. I skipped right over it. Crozier. Yeah, that's how you pronounce it. That's all I wanted to know. I just wanted to know how to pronounce it. Why would you have to make that so difficult? All right, number two. A part of something that is hook-shaped, curved, or bent, as in the crook, of an umbrella handle the crook of an umbrella handle why is that sentence so hard to say should put that in the list of tongue twisters it's not really a tongue twister but it's not easy to say three the synonyms are bend and curve four a person who engages in fraudulent or criminal practices took us a while to get to the one that I think most of us probably would have thought of. You hear crook, you probably think of somebody who's doing illegal stuff, a criminal. Uh, Let's see. The etymology basically, I mean, yeah, it basically comes from the word hook, which is not really a big surprise because they rhyme. But in fact, they are related. It went hook, uh, let's see, Old Norse croaker, Maybe I should do it that way. Maybe I should go backwards. Start with the first one and then see where it led us to. Let's do that. Um, Yeah, so croaker, who knows how to pronounce it? That's Old Norse. Maybe the Old Norse people know how to pronounce it. That word means hook. And then Middle English, it became crock. Yeah, it was crocker, croaker, and then it became crock and then crook. So crook really literally just means hook. Third form of crook, adjective from 1898. Uh, The first one, let's see. No, there's just one main definition with some subletters below it. It is Australian and New Zealandian. Is that how you would say that? Australian and New Zealandian. That can't be right. Is that right? Call me up. Let me know. Uh, the definition is just not right, R-I-G-H-T, like incorrect, not right. Mm, crook. Okay, so then we have A, the synonym is unsatisfactory. B, synonyms are dishonest, which also looks like dishonest. The dishes have not been honest. Also, the synonym crooked. C, the synonyms are 
irritable and angry. And that is used especially in the phrase, go crook. (laughs) Go crook. Like, go be angry or you are angry. Go crook. Oh, he went crook. Is that something that they would say? It's been fun learning about phrases and words that people use in other countries. And then D, the synonyms are ill and unwell. Ill and unwell. Crook. Well, maybe they're angry because they're unwell. This is probably just short for crooked, which we will get to soon. Crook back is next. One word, noun from 1508. Number one is obsolete, and it is a crooked back. A cro- well, that makes sense. A crook back. A crooked back. Maybe someday I will be a crook back. Number two is also obsolete, and the synonym is hunchback. I could deal with crookback, hunchback. Oh, I've seen people like that, and it just looks like it sucks. I hope I am never a hunchback, although with the way that my body is and how I sit, I would not be surprised if I am. So that's why I got to be, I got to gotta do, do physical stuff to not have that happen. Okay, next, uh, no, crook, crookbacked, that is an adjective. Okay, crooked is next adjective from the 13th century. Number one, not straight, as in a crooked road. Also as in, your tie is crooked. Your tie is not straight. That's a little bit of a pet peeve of mine, I'm not going to lie. Seeing somebody's tie that's a little crooked, you know, I'm not a perfectionist per se, but... You know, and you don't know. You don't know if your tie is not crooked. So it's like, hey, you just tighten your tie a little bit or crook, you know, straighten it up. It'll look a little bit better. But, you know, there's nothing better than a super crooked tie that's half loose. You know, that's that's the comfortable place. Um, what else? I had something else to say about the crooked tie. Oh, okay. I got another thing to say about ties. <laughs> or should we just wait until we get to the word tie? Um, yeah, whatever. We'll probably forget then. Um, there are different ways to tie a tie. And the way that I learned makes the two sides of the little diamond thing even. But then, when I was in high school, I learned that people learned how to tie a tie a whole other way. It's very similar, but it's a little bit different. And that makes one of the sides of the diamond, you know, irregular. It's a little bit smaller. I don't think it looks as good. I'm just going to say it. I think the other way is better. Okay, that was the tie. Okay, number two for crooked synonym is dishonest, as in a crooked election. Also as in crooked politicians. Unfortunately, both of those are way too common. Crookedly is an adverb, and crookedness is a noun. I hope I'm only ever physically crooked and not ever mentally crooked. I don't think I ever would be. Crookery is next. Noun from 1927. Crooked dealings or practices. <laughs> crookery. Sounds a little too much like cookery. Next is crook neck. One word. Oh, is this going to be similar to crook back? Noun from 1784. 1784. A squash with a long, recurved neck. This is not at all what I thought it might be. I did not expect it to be a squash, but it is a squash. And if it is a squash that has a long, recurved neck, I think I need to see one of these crook neck squashes. What is recurved? I mean, I assume it just means curved, but maybe it curves and then curves back? A recurve? Recurve? Okay. Croon is next. K-R-O-O-N. Verb from the 15th century. Starting with intransitive. Number one is chiefly Scottish. And the synonyms are bellow and boom. Croon. Two. I guess if it's your voice, maybe... (laughs) That is not my voice. 
Number two, to sing or speak in a gentle murmuring manner. Croon. Uh, and then especially to sing in a soft, intimate manner adapted to amplifying systems. To sing in a soft, intimate manner adapted to amplifying systems. What, do you mean you literally connected to a, like a PA system? What are you talking about? Uh, who, who are the crooners? Uh, uh, well, the Velvet Fog, um, obviously like Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin and all those guys, they were all considered crooners, weren't they? There's probably another couple. Uh, Fred Astaire. Was he the one who they always made fun of in cartoons? I feel like I saw something like that so many times. Uh, just a very skinny guy, very caricature and he was, I don't know. That was the thing. For him specifically, I think. Or maybe there was just one and I just remember it way too much. Okay. Croon, transitive verb, to sing as a popular song or lullaby in a crooning manner. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know a song off the top of my head. Hmm. I don't think New York, New York would be considered a crooning song. Yeah, I've heard them. I just can't think of them. Croon is a noun. Okay, etymology. Well, this is not what I would have expected. Um, it comes, it basically means to chatter, to chatter. That is the old high German word Kronen, uh, akin to the Middle Dutch Kronen. These are all spelled differently, kind of, and then Middle English Kroinen, and then it became Kroon. I hope that in... Uh, well, I don't know, 100 years, 200 years, somebody else does this again, and there will be a whole other level of etymology. Maybe how much will our language have changed uh, or bought, gotten combined with other things? Okay. Crooner is next. Noun from 1888. One that croons especially a singer of popular songs. I am a crooner. I'm really not a crooner, though, because I sing like that. boop doo boop ba doo Okay, last word. We got a couple forms. It's the word crop, C-R-O-P, noun from before the 12th century. One. There's a... So much text. I was about to swear this is getting very close to becoming an adult podcast. Sorry, kids. No, you should still listen, though. Um, a pouched enlargement of the gullet of many birds that serves as a receptacle for food and for its preliminary masturbation. Uh, and then also an enlargement of the gullet of another animal as an insect. An enlargement of the gullet of another animal. So it's basically just saying uh, other animals have gullets that are, are not birds. So that's what that is. We're trying we're basically trying to say that the gullet, the cr the crop, the gu what, what are we trying to say? The crop can be the gullet of many things, not just birds, but birds are the most common. But this is what is this? A specific part of the gullet? A part a pouched enlargement of the gullet. Wait. So is the thing, the thing that hangs down from a pelican's beak, I guess I would have called that the gullet, but is that called the crop? Bird expert, can you please let me know? 2A1, a plant or animal or plant, what? A plant or animal or plant or animal product. I didn't see the word product. That You can understand why I was so confused there. Because it would have said, a plant or animal or plant or animal. And that's not right. Um, okay, back... Oh, so I see. It's... this. This I'm figuring it out. It is a plant or animal or plant product or animal product that can be grown and harvested extensively for profit or sustenance, as in an apple crop. Also as in a crop of wool. So it's a thing that we humans take from nature and sell to other people to make money. That is what that is. It's out there for us to take if we want to ourselves, 
But no, we have to make and spend money for the things that are here naturally on the earth. Just stating the facts. 2A2, the total yearly production from a specified area, you know, of the apple crop. The amount that you sell from that apple crop is called the crop. 2B, the product or yield of something formed together, as in the ice crop. Why? Okay. 2C, a batch or lot of something produced during particular a particular cycle. The batch or lot of something produced during a particular cycle, as in the current crop of films. I am about to tonight watch the award show for the current crop of films from 2021. Because we like to watch the Oscars and we like to watch movies, if you didn't know that. Um, and it's uh, it's fun. I, I have mixed feelings about any award show. But hey, they're fun. And the movies are fun. 2D, the synonym is collection, as in a crop of lies. This dictionary is a crop of lies. Number three, the stock or handle of a whip. Also, a riding whip with a short, straight stock and a loop. Oh yeah, I have heard they call that a crop. But why? Number four, A, the part of the chine of a quadruped, as a domestic cow, lying immediately behind the withers. And this is usually used in plural, and then you got to go see the cow illustration if you want to get a visual. So, you know, we, we read that not that long ago. Maybe we can quickly take a look back. If we can find it, where is it? Cow? Is that what it said? It said cow, right? Cow. Where? Oh, I just didn't. I went too far is the problem. I thought it was further back. Uh, the crops. Let's see. Crop. Oh, now we got to find crops in this big thing of text here number 16 uh yeah this is the part that's like the middle like the ribs goes right down the middle that area there's a lot of stuff inside of there why do they call it the crop 4b an earmark on an animal especially one made by a straight cut squarely removing the upper part of the ear why why do you got to do this to an animal What is the purpose of this? To say that they're mine? Is that... I mean, it's better than branding. Do people still do branding, though? Why we gotta do this to things, to these things? That hurts. Number 4C, a close cut of the hair. Your hair got cropped. I may need to... I think I need to get the sides cropped again. Um, (laughs) By the way, I forgot to mention, when we were talking about the bird gullet thing... um, There's that great, it's just worded so great. It serves as a receptacle for food and for its preliminary maceration. So I think, is that, I mean, I know mastication is chewing. Is maceration, what is that? Is that where it starts to, like, the salivary glands start to digest it a little bit? Does it soften it up? Is that what they do there? Um, Maybe because they have such a, a short... A small neck, there's such a small body that they need to pre-digest it a little bit. Is that what that is? I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a receptacle. It's the food receptacle. Can you imagine putting something, something in your mouth and then it just sits there for a little bit? How long do they let it sit there for? I didn't think that they let it sit there. Maybe they do. Oh, okay. Etymology. This is from, uh, well, it's a word. It means goiter or craw. So craw makes a bunch of sense. Uh, that is the old high German kropf, akin to old English crop, which means craw or head of a plant. Uh, then it became, so it went from crop then to craw in Middle English craw, which is head of a plant or yield of a field. Um, so it went from basically crop to craw. Oh, no, sorry. Yes, I'm just misreading it. Yeah, it just basically stayed crop the whole time with different spellings. And it basically means craw, the craw of the bird. It's the mouth, the maw. Second form of crop, verb from 
the 13th century, uh, starting with transitive. 1A, to remove the upper or outer parts of, as in crop a hedge. Also as in crop a dog's ears. Uh, yeah, they, they, uh, what are those, what are those, um, oh boy, not dachshunds, starts with a D, um, what are those dogs called? You know what I'm talking about, the real fierce looking ones, and they literally cut the edges of their ears, and then I think that they, they like, put some they they it, they seal it up they they heal it up in a weird way i think they they make them pointy they put uh they uh, it's terrible why 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 do you do this why would you do this to a dog's ears this makes no sense to me jeez okay 1b the synonym is harvest as in crop trout 1c to cut off short as in no the synonym trim as in crop a photograph i do that all the time when i'm dealing with the photos you got it you got to crop it cuz you know yeah number 2 to cause to we got to do a page flip to cause to bear a crop and the thing that is bearing the crop is land it said that in the parentheses, so I had to tell you. As in, planned to crop another 40 acres. Also, to grow as a crop. Those were transitive. Now we have intransitive. That sounded like a song. Number one, to feed by cropping something. Two, to yield or make a crop. Three, to appear unexpectedly or casually. As in, problems crop up daily they sure do okay so the words in this episode this last one for page 297 crony cronyism crook 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 back crooked crookery crook neck croon crooner crop and crop hmm the one that I think should be the word of the episode is I wish people could vote put in your votes right now which one do you choose um let's see I mean I guess maybe just croon or crooner let's pick crooner as the word of the episode uh you know because they're very talented and that means I need to sing a crooner song in a crooner way all right that is the end of this episode thank you very much for listening and until next time this is spencer dispensing information goodbye hello word nerds welcome to another episode of the dictionary i don't know why these headphones don't always sound up to snuff what's going on uh whatever hey i just had a little snack and a part of the snack was this really really tasty chili crisp sauce thing that you can put on stuff and it's so tasty but it's got a good kick and uh my nose has been kind of running and i sneezed so if uh, any of that happens in the next uh you know 20 minutes or so it's because i ate that stuff but oh boy it's so tasty okay this is the first section of the page to of the page 298 uh, the first word is going to be crop circle. Two words. Noun from 1988. There's just one definition. A geometric and especially a circular pattern of flattened stalks in a field of grain now usually attributed to natural phenomena or to the work of hoaxers trying to create the impression of a visit by extraterrestrial beings. Of course, we got to post some pictures of crop circles. What is happening? What? How did these things happen? Obviously, humans can create these, but when did they first happen? Do we have proof that humans created these every single one of these crop circles are there some that we just don't know how they were created there's a pretty good chance that they were just all created by humans but 
but they're so weird and interesting and fascinating and weird patterns and are they, are they just the work of artists? Maybe uh, maybe there's like a Wikipedia link or something. Maybe I'll put some more stuff in the show notes. But yeah, crop circles, fun, cool, interesting, confusing, fascinating, fun to look at. Yeah. Uh, okay, sound effect. I'm just going to maybe make a sound and then maybe I'll just evolve it as I go like I kind of did in the last one. I didn't know what I was doing in the last one. But here we go. It's a beep. There's a cat in here. Are you glad that you're in the bedroom? You don't usually get to be in here. Are you going to take a nap? Sure. Beep. First, uh, next word is crop duster. Two words. Noun from 1939. Uh, I think there is a definition, a slang definition in here that it is. Sorry, it's not in here, but it should be in here. Uh, Okay, a crop duster, a person who sprays crops with fungicidal or insecticidal dusts from an airplane, and then also the airplane thus used, they they use the word thus, the airplane thus used to spray crops with fungicidal or insecticidal dusts from that airplane. Uh, They're dusting it with this stuff that's either going to kill funguses so the crops can grow or insects it's going to kill insects so the crops can grow and not be destroyed by those things uh yeah that's what that is and um the 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 plane flies overhead and then they release a a thing and then all the stuff just flies out of the bottom or maybe there are other ways these days that they can crop dust i don't think you want to crop dust people um, and then, of course, there's the the slang usage of you're walking you're walking down the street and you fart, and then there's some people that you walk past, and so you have crop dusted them with your with your fart particles, your farticles. Beep beep. Next is crop duster. Two words, noun from 1939. No, I just I literally just read that one. Uh, for some reason, I thought that eh, don't worry, we're gonna move on. Two. Crop eared, two words with a hyphen adjective from 1530, having the ears cropped. And uh, yeah, you know, we, we talked about that a little bit in, uh, in yesterday's episode, somewhere in one of the crop words. Ears get cropped. So if a dog has had its ears cropped, that dog would be crop eared. Next is cropland, noun from 1846, land that is suited to or used for crops. It's uh, it's land great for crops. That's all it is, cropland. Next is cropper, first form, noun from the 15th century, one One that crops. It's very clear, very obvious. Thank you, cropper. Number two, one that raises crops. Specifically, the synonym sharecropper. Uh, One that raises crops and then one that crops. What is the difference? One that crops, would that be one that crops ears or crops something else? That's cropper. It's just a it's just a little ditty. Second form of cropper, noun from 1850. One, a severe fall. That's a cropper. Number two, a sudden or violent failure or collapse. Hmm. Let's see. This is probably from the English dialect word crop, which means neck. Neck. Did we have that uh, in yesterday's episode? Just neck. Hmm. I don't. I don't remember that one. Um, and then that's yeah. That's just from the first form of crop. So a severe fall, or uh, a sudden or violent failure or collapse, comes from the word neck. That's a little. That's a little odd to me. What? What is this dialect region? What's the context? How did it happen? 
this would become that. Cropper, a fall. Hmm. Dee, 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 dee. Next is crop rotation. Two words, noun from 1909. The practice of growing different crops in succession on the same land, chiefly to preserve the productive capacity of the soil. Yeah, I've heard a little bit about this. Uh, one year, you plant corn, and then the next year, so the soil doesn't get so uh, used to one crop, keeps it interesting, keeps keeps the life of the soil fun and interesting and fascinating for them, then you change it up with a different crop. Uh, and then maybe the next year, do you go back to corn? Do you do a different crop altogether? What are the rules? Maybe there's different rules for different types of soil in different parts of the world. It also depends on what you want to grow. But uh, yeah, it keeps the soil good and also probably does a better job uh, for the crops. That's what I would think. Crop rotation. See, I changed it up. I don't know what that was. It's very similar, though. Next is crop top. Two words. Noun from 1971. A short upper body garment for women that does not cover the midriff. Uh, it, it's the top. It, somebody is wearing a top, but the bottom part has been cropped off. It's been cut. That's why it does not cover the midriff. That's you, basically your like your your belly button area. It dep- it's it's maybe a little area. It could be a big area. It depends on how short the top has been cropped. It says it's for women. Largely that is true, but you know anybody can wear a crop top if you want. Just if you like it and it's comfortable, go ahead and wear it. Whoever you are. I, I know, I know that there are some men who are wearing crop tops. Next, it is croque monsieur. You could uh, pronounce it croque or croc or croak. Croc, but see, I don't know. Croc, croc, croak. And then you could say monsieur or monsieur if you want to say it that way. Um, okay, it is spelled C-R-O-Q-U-E, second word, M-O-N-S-I-E-U-R, croque monsieur, noun from 1915. This is a ham and cheese sandwich that is usually dipped in batter and grilled. I mean, obviously, that sounds pretty amazing. Uh, I, uh, I sometimes make some, uh, some vegan grilled cheeses, um, but I, maybe I can throw some, some vegan ham in there, but then dipped in batter, I, I gotta do that. How do, I, I don't know how to make the batter. Is it pancake batter? Is there some other kind of batter? I've asked these questions before, and I'm just not familiar with batters, really, because I just don't make them, but maybe I need to do that. And then you grill it? Ooh. Uh, I did, I think the first time I was in Paris, I saw this uh, at a restaurant. There's another sandwich that is similar. It's not in this book for some reason, and I do not know why. It is a croque madame. There's a croque monsieur and a croque madame. The madame, it's different. I don't remember why. I will put it in the show notes of how the madame sandwich is different, but it, but they're there. You go to, you go to uh, France, you're going to be able to find these sandwiches anywhere. I think they're very popular. Yeah, it's a French phrase. It's a French words. Literally means, here we go. It's only two words, but it means, one bites with a crunch, the gentleman. <laughs> this is the best, the best translation ever. One bites with a crunch, the gentleman. But I should say that the words one and the are in parentheses. So technically, it really means, bites with a crunch, gentleman. If I just read that, I would be so very confused. But yes, the sandwich has been grilled, so it's crunchy, and it's maybe usually a gentleman who's eating it. Is that why the it's monsieur? Uh, because it's it's for a man to eat, and then the madame is for the lady to eat. Is that what we're? I mean, that's obviously we don't need that. 
But hey, that's that's what the it's that's what it's called. It's named Croque Monsieur, so whatever. Next is croquet. C R O Q U E T. Noun from 1855. One, a game in which players using mallets drive wooden balls through a series of wickets set out on a lawn. And the wickets are little metal arches. If you've never played this, if you've never seen it, uh, that's what they are. It's metal bent in kind of like an arch shape. I don't know, how big is it? Maybe 8 to 12 inches high, maybe 8 inches across. I don't know, it's been a long time since I played croquet. Uh, and then, yeah, you got the you got the mallets and the balls, and you hit them through the thing, and it's like a diamond shape, kind of. Number two, the act of driving away an opponent's croquet ball by striking one's own ball placed against it. I don't know if I realized that that was called croquet, that that thing where you hit the, their ball away. It's a, it's a very, very mean thing to do. Say, so, hey, sorry. Uh, you got to go over there now, and you it's going to be, be very hard for you to, to get your ball back over here uh, and get it through the wicket. Get it through the wicket when we play croquet. Okay, so this is probably from the obsolete, or it is an obsolete French word, which means sharp blow from the verb croquer. So French people, they probably know, oh yeah, croquet, that just means a sharp blow, and that's that's the thing when you hit the part of the person's ball. But I, I'm an English, an American person. I didn't speak French when I was playing this, so I had no idea that uh, it was named after the, the hitting of the ball. And I didn't ask either. I didn't, I didn't question. They just said it's, it's called croquet. So I said, okay, croquet. Um, transitive verb is also just croquet. Croquet is also a transitive verb. Uh, we used to play this whenever we would go to my grandparents' house. Maybe my cousins would be in town, and uh, there was just enough room in the lawn to set up a uh, croquet. So, yes, I have fond memories of playing croquet with my my parents, my grandparents, my aunts and uncles, and my cousins. And uh, I think that's just about the only time I've ever played croquet. Maybe once or twice that was not with them in that place. But, uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's definitely what I think of when I think of croquet. Good times. Okay. Next is croquette. We just added a T-E to the end of croquet, and it became croquette. Noun from 1706. A small, often rounded mass consisting usually of minced meat, fish, or vegetable coated with egg and breadcrumbs and deep fried. Yeah, I mean, you really can't go wrong with uh, coating something in breadcrumbs and deep frying it. But, you know, you, you can't do it too much. You got to be careful with your health. So, you know, maybe once a year, a couple times a year, maybe. It's French. It is from the verb croquer. Oh, see, croquet also came from croquer. But in this case, it means to crunch. Huh. Uh, f- also from middle, la- oh, you know what, um, I'm not doing the etymology backwards. I'll finish this one up and then maybe the rest of them I'll do backwards. Um, yeah, middle French, to strike or break or cause to crack. Uh, so, let's see. I mean, clearly this is related to croquet, also croque monsieur. So croque monsieur, it's got that crunch, that's croquer, but then it became striking breaking causing to crack and with this thing when you when you bite into it it's crunchy and it cracks it breaks so you know that's that's sort of what we're talking about here a croquette breaks in your mouth and a croquet you hit the thing ah, you, you you get it you get it i i don't need to keep on going with that next is croquenol or croquignol. It is spelled C-R-O-Q-U-I-G-N-O-L-E. 
croquignol, noun from 1932, a method used in waving the hair by winding it on curlers from the ends of the hair toward the scalp. So you're, it's just you're curling the hair. And then when you take the curlers out, it's, it's in waves. I don't think uh, non-French people use this phrase, do they? You just say you put it up in curlers. Yeah, this is French, croquignol, and it means light blow or Philip, F-I-L-L-I-P. No clue what that means, but light blow, maybe it looks like the wind has lightly blown your hair into waves, <laughs> your straight hair into waves. If wind could do that, that would be pretty amazing. Croquignol. That's a fun word. Next. Croaky. No, it is croaky. C-R-O-Q-U-I-S. This is a very French section. Noun from 1805. It's just a rough draft. And the synonym is sketch. Okay, yeah, French from the verb croquer, which, if I'm looking back, is the same verb that croque, monsieur, croquet, and croquette came from. But in this case, it says to sketch, also rough out, but then literally to crunch. I'm so fascinated by what happened here. Uh, to crunch, I mean, obviously, sketch and rough out makes sense because it is a sketch. But then the crunch, translating these things has got to be so difficult. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Maybe maybe if it's a rough sketch, it's crunchy. It looks crunchy. Would, would you, I, I guess you could describe like a light pencil sketch as crunchy. But boy, that's, a, that's interesting. Croquis, croquis, and then the plural is croquis, but it's spelled the same way. It's just pronounced it differently. Croquis, croquis. Next is crore. Mm, crore. C R O R E. Noun from 1609. Uh, the plural is crores or just crore again. And it is a unit of value equal to 10 million rupees or 100 locks. Okay. I don't think we use rupees or locks in uh, most English speaking language, although uh, English speaking countries, but in India, because this is from Hindi and Urdu in India, there's a lot of English spoken because they used to be a British colony. uh, And so I guess that's why it's, it's considered enough to be in the English language dictionary, the crore. Um, Yeah. Hindi and Urdu And their word is karor, K-A-R-O-R. 10 million rupees, that's a lot of rupees, or 100 lakhs. Lakhs is spelled L-A-K-H-S. I don't know, is there like, is it like, well, 10 million rupees, if we divide that by 100, that would be one, would be 100,000. So there's 100,000 rupees in one lakh, I have to assume. But are they in the same country? Does the same country use those units of value, uh, or are those different? How the exchange rate changes, or does it not in this case? I don't know. Do 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 do. All right, we're on the last word. It is crozier, C R O S I E R, or you can spell it with a Z instead of an S. Noun from the 15th century, one, a staff resembling a shepherd's crook carried by bishops and abbots as a symbol of office. And uh, I think in just the last uh, episode or two, we had uh, somewhere the synonym was crozier. I'm going to find it real quick, super fast. You'll be so shocked at how fast I find this, won't you? Yeah, I think it was uh, somewhere around this croc, croc area. Whatever, I can't find it. Uh, bunk, smudge. I'm trying to look for the, the thing with the stuff. You know what? 
we don't care. Okay, so that is corrosion number one, but number two is a plant's structure with a coiled end. Okay, etymology, let's go backwards. There's more information at the word crutch with a C-R-U um, because this is from Old English, crick, which means crutch, uh, from Germanic origin, uh, let's see, Anglo-French, cross, crouch, I don't know how to pronounce those, that means crozier, uh, and then Middle English, cross, croaker, or crocher, which means crozier, a crozier bearer, okay, so crutch, uh, you know, a crutch is, if, you, if you're limping, if you got an injury, whatever, you need a crutch to help you, so it's basically, you know, it's a big stick to help you crutch along, um, and then it became the bearer of the crutch, and then it just became the thing, the crozier. Okay, cool. We found it. Okay, so the words in this episode were crop circle, crop duster, crop eared, crop land, cropper, cropper, crop rotation, crop top, croque monsieur, croquet, croquette, croquignol, croquee, gotta say croquee, croar, and crozier. So many good ones. So many good ones. Honestly, this is a very difficult to pick. Um, oh boy. Oh boy. I, I, you know, fond memories of croquet. Uh, eating a croquette or a croque monsieur sounds great. Uh, maybe, maybe someday if my hair is long. Well, see, I, that's the thing. I don't really need a croque and yole for my hair because it's already kind of wavy, very wavy. It's curly, in fact. Uh, the croquis, the croquis, the sketch, the rough draft, that, that one's pretty cool, actually. Um, yeah, let's, but the crop circle, I mean, come on, crop circles, those are, those are fascinating. Uh, let's pick croquis as the word of the episode. I'd never heard of it before for a rough sketch. What a fancy, no, I don't know what that is. Um, gotta make a quick pencil sketch it's called a croaky it's really crunchy <laughs> all right i think that's fine thank you very much for listening to this and uh, you know go let other people know about it this has been spencer dispensing information goodbye <laughs>